is something utterly wrong in the town of Stridus. Over the past two weeks, mysterious human-like creatures have been plaguing the city, causing havoc and, well, chaos. However, these attacks are being met and stopped by the valiant and magnificent efforts of the monarchs. An elite group of female mercenaries banded together to stop the menace plaguing their city. Amidst all of this, the Magical Army of the United Religions, also known as the MAUR, has summoned the Rat Queens to Stridus to seek out the Chaosium they fear lies within their city. A powerful relic once belonging to, uh, belonging to a once ridiculed, ridiculed cult, suddenly containing a horrifying level of power, terrifies the army for a number of reasons. If a cult whose god was once mocked unreal turned out to exist, then what truths actually live in this world? After getting to know the monarchs, Danny the Tiefling Mage, Marigold the Dwarven Fighter, Kira the Human Cleric, Lola the Smidgen Thief, and Midge the Orc Spoken Word Bard. The Rat Queens teamed up and stopped a band of pirates from destroying Stridus's port. After that, the Queens met up with Tifa and Claude from the MAUR, who provided them with the Military Army of United Religions information about the Chaosium, as well as Tifa's honest distrust of the Monarchs. Later that night, Dee, Braga, and Violet found themselves wandering the streets of Stridus, recounting over the day, the activities, uh, Braga having just sent a letter to someone someone important, as they walked back towards the port in search of Violet's lost axe. Meanwhile, Hannah had skillfully jumped her way across from rooftop to rooftop, scaling the residential district of Stridus to observe the monarchs entering a building. Which building? She's still unfamiliar of, but then catching a glimpse of a young girl staring at her and then blowing out a candle. And then finally, Betty. Betty, who had been stabbed in the back by a cursed dagger, whose curse was stopped by the combined efforts of Dee and Kira, lay asleep, healing, and then transferred. Her mind was brought to the realm in between, right in front of Arius themselves, as Arius laughed as they watched Betty move a pawn on the board, the chessboard of Arius's devious plans, until Betty knocked over the king. We open on a foggy, hazy sea morning in the Stinking Pig Inn. Hannah, D, Violet, and Braga all sit in the inn enjoying a meager breakfast of some dried meats, cheeses, and bread. As Kathiri, owner and former rogue herself, works behind the bar. As the four queens sit eating, Suddenly, at the top of the stairs, stands Betty, awake and well. What did you guys do to my back? This one wasn't us this time. We totally like we we were just there, and it was the it was the ink people. I killed one of them. I just right in half because of your back. That's absolutely the truth. I covered your body. I gave you bandages. Are you missing a finger? Yeah, that that happened. It's kind of cool. Looks like you're throwing a hand signal every time, though. So yeah. That's maybe confusing. He's yeah, I'm going to have to get, like, a glove or something. Okay. Well, not feeling great. This is all bad. Uh, what else happened while I was uh, up there in, the, uh, in Lola Land? There were pirates. Oh, okay. Uh, there's other uses running around. Oh. Um, similar, similar type of cool. Those, lady, those ladies that, that came by before I got knocked out? Yeah. Yeah. And, They're uh, the monarchs. 
cool. Cool. Yeah. Like, Are we like, going with that? They're cool. That's that's the term we're giving them. Well, I'm mean, think they're they're excellent at what they do. They're, they have their they have their shit together. Yeah, they absolutely. Mm-hmm. But, they all get along. But again, huh. we're not going with suspicious, too nice, coincidentally similar. Oh no, all those things. Yeah, I don't, I don't trust anybody but y'all. I mean, I, that's it. Our this group is who I trust, and that's it. That's the end of the line. I, I trust, I trust Violet. I trust Betty. I trust Hannah. I trust D, and that's it. Not right. even Praga. I'm not even. You don't trust yourself. I'm a little bit. I, I get messy. Well, yeah. I slam that. Look at that. I point to the the hole in the floor where I slammed Barbarian Dave down last time. Yeah, I don't trust myself sometimes. Just putting it out there. I think you handled that really well. Oh, I thought it was spot on. And he seemed... It was the timing. It was the timing. He came in with an axe and said, I have something to say. And the town got attacked in that exact second. I feel I feel okay about it. I don't think... I wouldn't see I wouldn't see a monarch handle the situation that way. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So what I'm hearing is, one, we did break another tavern. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. True. Uh, <laughs> What's my fault? But it, not on fire. It's not on fire yet. And two, I'm also hearing that there are mysterious doppelgangers that look exactly like us, and we think they might be evil because that's probably par for the course. I mean, I think everyone's now. probably evil at this point. Yep. Okay. Oh, we oh we met also a couple other things. We met the uh, one of the uh, the magical army people, and she told us to be careful with them. Mara. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. she knew that girl. Remember that woman we met at the spa? She knew her. Oh. Her, her sister was on the boat. Her, Chloe, who died on the Chloe. boat, was her sister. Yeah, Chloe is Leona's older sister. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was a that was mind blowing. Yes. That okay. happened. Yeah. Also, small small I've, worlds. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't seem too small. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. truth is, we don't know if we're supposed to trust. Um, I have a story too. Okay. Uh, remember how Braga was trapped in a weird dream world with Arius? Yeah. And that I was remember. real spooky. I, d- I had one of those too. It's very bad. Uh, and I think something with a king being taken down. Either I did it, or we did it, or someone did it. But there, the prophecy is like coming true. What? There's something. I don't know. I had a. T wasn't a, there a king? Weren't you supposed to kill a king for to get me back? Yeah. Um. I mean, that was the deal I made with Nariga, and a- apparently. I mean, I don't know where that deal st- that deal still stands, especially the D eel. The, the D eel, mm-hmm. ha ha, it still stands, especially after Krona, Narigoth, all of that mess. But I mean, if I don't know, am I supposed to still do it? Are we? What are we supposed to kill this person? Do we have to protect this person? What? I if, don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think any of us know. Yeah, I, it's hard to like. When you're bargaining with gods like Nirigoth, I don't think there's like a cut and dry, like good solution, probably. Good point. D then takes out the big leather bound f- case file on Chaosiums and puts it on the table. Well, I, I spent all night, all night reading over this uh, from Tifa and. Hannah, I know you talked about possibly. What if we made a fake one? Uh, I, I know think we- that was a group. That was a group. That was a group Stop. effort, yeah. I, think, I don't want to take credit. I'm not the leader. But we all have good ideas sometimes. You had a great idea. I don't think it was my idea. I'm, that's what I'm saying. It might have been my idea, but I just remember all of us talking about it. I wasn't even there for that conversation, but I'm going to th- thumbs it up. What's the fake one for? The fake Well, Chaosium? basically as bait for the fucking weirdos. Well, not to just at least distract them. But the fact of the matter is we know that they know about the Chaosiums. We don't know for sure if we can trust them or not. Mm-hmm. And this is a this is a decoy while we actually do our job. Right? Exactly. So if we're able to build some kind of fake one, perhaps we're able to attract whoever is sending these things, what these things exactly want and and maybe anybody else who wants this thing. We're not like afraid that if we make a fake one, we'll then accidentally make a real one and then like cause more pro. Like that's the thing that no, I've I been think, worried about. I think we should just like get some like get some rock, like some mud and like carve. Who's good at molding stuff? He's like carve. I think skull. you've been asleep for a long time. And then time, just like Betty. put like a bunch of like little shiny pieces of glass on it. I just like, like hug her. Do you want some? Than to drink or eat or anything. I mean, always, but yeah. Why don't you just focus on that? Can we get some eggy bakey bready over here <gasps> for a little one? Uh, Kithiri <laughs> pops up from behind the bar. You want a what? Eggy Thank bakey you. Ready. 
Eggy, oh, eggy, ready? I hate big cities. You want eggs? Bacon and bread. Bacon and bread. I mean, you got. I mean, you got bread and cheese on your table. I can get you some eggs. Great. Yes, please. Okay. Eggies. And bacon. It would help. Bacon. Eggs, bacon, bread. Ready. Mm -hmm. Got it. As you see, the theory <laughs> kind of slowly eyeing you all what the hell you just said as she walks back into the kitchen. I thought we were very clear. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. right in the name. Yeah. I hate big cities. I hate big cities so much. We're going to get out of here. There's and, and just to quell your fear, there's no way that we could make this chaosium real. In order, according to these case notes, in order to make a chaosium, a cultic member of Arius has to go through this petrification process where they literally sacrifice their body, turn themselves to stone, then offer their skulls to then house Arius's power. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to go find one of their skulls. I was thinking... Actually, yeah, maybe we make something out of paper mache or something. And paper mache! Yeah, 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 let's do that one. The thing will just be... <sighs> Here's the tricky part. We have to put enough magic into this thing to make it feel like a chaosium. These chaosiums, their, their magical abilities are unheard of. We won't be able to get to that level, but I think between Hannah and I, if... With our powers combined, literally, we can possibly make something that feels magically pretty close. Okay. Unless we just coat it in some sort of drug, so when you touch it, you just feel loopy. Is that not the same thing? It could be a second stage. That's de I def yeah. I think, it's, I think, it's, al I think it's almost a good idea. It's Look, definitely a trap setting and I like the idea because yeah. whoever's going to pick it up yeah, or they just, whatever. They, they feel loopy, they have a little nap and they're like, oh, that was so magical. But okay, we don't my... know if we're going to need I just want to say this out loud. We don't know if we're going to need them. Right? I mean, I, I am I, for one, don't want to drug them and have them sleeping through something that we could potentially need them for. They did help us on the street. <gasps> Betty could be dead right now if it wasn't for the monarchs. So you're suggesting that the group, I'm just, I'm just like giving us, giving back what you just gave us, that the group that you've been working with isn't enough to solve any problems that might come our way that we might need another five people to help us? I'm saying that, yes, it may take more than five people to save the world. That's, out of, That's what that, I'm saying. Then why don't we just invite them to be rat queens? Because... You know what? There's things called alliances and partnerships and, and group coordination. Uh, there, there's all sorts of international relations things that are very helpful to people in the world. Okay? Trust. Relationship building. Shared experiences. Bloodshed together. Near-death life experiences. And fuck, man, I've seen you naked. And that's how you, you want these people to work with you? Okay, what if you look at it this way? If there's more of us out there in the fight, there's more people to possibly get hit by things that aren't us. There I go. hate to think of it that way, but that's a thing to consider. She means human shields. No, I get what she means. Okay. Whatever appeals to your senses, I think I'm in for. All I'm saying is I'm okay with the distraction chaosium. I just don't want them to be out of commission if we are totally screwed. Okay, let's just make a chaosium that is magical. Truth you, serum. What, what do you think? Oh, that's a good idea. Do you have a truth? Do you have a truth do I have mushroom? A, I don't do you have truth magic? Either one of you? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, I could, that, you could do some if we had only on known that. earlier if that were true. <laughs> I mean, as a as a cleric, I have... I, I don't have, like, a, a zone of truth, but, I mean, I essentially have, I don't know, a persuasion I can detect... Okay, well. I'm just like, throwing out ideas. I mean, I, I think it's a good brainstorm there, Braga. Thank you. At that moment. Magic gives me a headache. Magic gives me a headache, but. Braga, all of a sudden you feel this person kind of bump into you as they kind of, <laughs> and they turn and they bump right into D2 before heading off to a table in the back. You I checked my pockets. Your pockets are fine. Okay. <laughs> it's just this, it feels, it feels like this, this person just kind of like, just uh, sl like just bumped into you very sloppily. Okay, I like kind of like grasp my axe and then I go look. I kind of like I want to do a quick uh, get situated at them. Roll me two d six plus canny. 
<laughs> I'm finally not at a disadvantage on this anymore. <laughs> Yay! I mean, it's not great still, but. Okay, that is a. <laughs> it's still a six. A token? <laughs> Do I have any tokens? Let's see. Hannah has one, Violet has one, Braga one has one, and Betty has one. Well, Braga has none now because I'm using one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll make that a seven. Wonderful. So with a seven, take that away from Braga. With a seven, you can ask uh, one question. Yeah, I'm going to ask the what's going on here that isn't obvious to me. You notice that after this gentleman bumped into you, you see that where it looks like he's maybe wearing gloves, he actually has just these really hairy arms. And he's got almost these kind of claw-like hands as this kind of tufts of hair kind of are poking out from underneath his dress shirt as he just kind of ends up just slobbly, slobbin, slovenly and just slobbishly meandering between tables and kind of bumping, throwing his weight until he finds himself putting his drink down and leaning on a table next to this very tall woman at this table. She has this beautiful, almost like dark purple maroon-like hair that is in this super high ponytail that just comes down and it's all the way down her back. You see that she has this really impressive spear on her back too as she stands, as she sits very proudly with a very tight back as this gentleman just kind of starts to flirt with her. I, rec I recount all that information to the rest of the party. <laughs> oh, cool. Like a wolf man? Maybe. I don't know. I just know he bumped into me and D. Oh, he seems real drunk. Wolf man. And real excited to talk to that lady over there. Uh, I want. Can I try to... Um, Betty reads the wolf man to learn more about him? Oh, me too. D6 plus canny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. With an 11, all right, you get three things. Do you want to ask three questions, or do you just want to know three things? I want to just observe three things. All right. Uh, and so let's see. Uh, we're doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin that first poll in the chat right about now. Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> um, what, uh, where is he from? You see that his clothing doesn't make him look like a... A city person. He's kind of wearing traveler's clothing. Very, very rusted and old traveler's clothing. So you can tell that he's been on a journey. He's been on he's been on a mission for a while or an adventure for a while. He has not been home in some time. Um is is he why why is he why is he? Is, is, is he <laughs> sick or inebriated in some way or not himself in some way? I guess. He is definitely inebriated. Wasted. Okay. And then third question. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, does he have any weapons? Like, like, why do we care about him right now? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Does he have any weapons on him? Oh, oh. He has this very beautiful, almost bronze, clean, polished bronze sword at his... Actually, no, it's a tarnished bronze sword at his oh. hip. So it has this aquamarine and teal-like color. Uh, it has not been cleaned in a long time, but even though it has not been polished, this cop... Sorry, it's copper. This beautiful aged copper sword looks somehow enchanted. Hmm. Who wants a magic sword? I'll, I'll take a magic sword. As soon as you say that, the woman <laughs> sitting at the table stands up and uppercuts this werewolf gentleman. Oh, there it goes. <sighs> there goes a magic sword. He oh. goes <laughs> flying against the back wall and starts to slide down <clears throat> as you see his claws begin to somewhat twitch. Oh, uh, no. Uh, I, I go over to the wolf man. All right. Hi, how you doing? You okay, buddy? <coughs> you, you cool? <sighs> you need a little nappy? You good? You hear him pop his jaw back into place as it makes this horrible, like, click noise. Oh, it's bad. <sighs> I don't know what, what people's problems are. I just want to go have a conversation with her, and she just punched me against the wall. What'd you say to her? 
You are what are you all the way over there talking to me for? <laughs> it's not a big because <laughs> she got punched on the floor. I walk up over to him. What'd you say to her? I don't know. She looks really nice. It was a shame she was alone, and that I was gonna offer her some company. I'm on her side. Uh, are you a wolf man? How did you? How'd you know? Cause you're hairy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, were you, were you always a wolf man, or did you just become a wolf man now? This is so interesting. Hey guys, he's a wolf man. Come here. Um, <laughs> um, Betty. <laughs> but it's, I've never met a wolf man before. Did he tell me, tell me? Were you always a wolf man? No, I was cursed as a young man, oh. and then I was cursed again. <laughs> First, I was cursed to turn into a wolf at night under the full moon. Uh, moon uh, full moon. <laughs> Classic werewolf stuff. Mm. Uh huh. And then I got cursed again. To do what? To just be in mid werewolf transition at all times. So when, so when the full moon is out, you become more wolf like. No, or I you just, just stay the same. This is like a just stable always wolf just a little. Which is, I guess, better than. Yeah. Being the full wombed werewolf that you would have become. Why, why do we keep saying wombed werewolf? <laughs> this is a moon. This is a okay. werewolf moon. Every time yeah. you see a womb, you uh-huh. turn into a wolf. It's I know early. A guys we haven't like had our too. breakfast yet. We mm-hmm. say weird things right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, so who cursed you? Oh, it's a long story. Okay. Well, it was this, uh, it was, I was a foolish young man at the age of 18. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> stole an amulet. <laughs> nope. An amulet. Uh, okay. You still like have you it? Do. Oh, yep. It's you see him kind of open up his chest, and there's no chain. You just see this amulet is now fused to his skin. Yeah, that's what I guess. This is what you get. This is a moon amulet fused to my skin. So that made me became a werewolf. And mm-hmm. then about 13 years later, uh, diff- I pissed off a different enchantress, <laughs> and then she cursed me just to stay. Have transformed. Have you considered not talking to women? Because it seems like you don't have a great track record. I love women. Well, there's also yeah. classes you could take so that you could be less, you know, offensive. I'm offensive? Yeah. You've gotten just, cursed twice, dude. And just, punched. I mean, yeah. those, those, those were enchantresses. I, just, I mean, she's... So you, yeah, you think that they is probably on them. Because enchantresses, you know, they kind of basically they punched you with their spells. Right, that's... Exactly. Think right. about it. And that woman punched you with her fist. Just because we're at a bar doesn't mean that we're intending for someone to talk to us. Like, women are allowed to go to bars to have drinks just like men are. Hey, and why your... is it a shame when they're alone? Sorry, Betty. Well, no, no. Uh, what's your name? Wolf? Half wolf? My name's person? Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Lincoln. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Stupid name. Yeah. Um, Do you not want to be a wolf? Should we, are you trying to break the curse? Or well, you just I mean, kinda I've, just, with it? I've just almost given up at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, once you've gotten cursed twice, I mean, maybe if I get cursed a third time, I get mm-hmm. turned back to normal. Why are we wasting our time? But I just feel We're like, just I don't know, drinking. That's mm-hmm. what I do now. Mm-hmm. Drinking and adventuring. Like oh. you do going from town to town. Uh, taking some jobs. Making some money. Spending that money. Taking more jobs, mm-hmm. making more money. Mm-hmm. Sidebar. That money. Sidebar. What if we cut his head off and make it into the Chaosium? What if he happens to be a really good with his hands and, well, he can, and he can mold us a Chaosium? Excuse me. Uh huh. And suddenly, this this nine foot tall woman just comes out of nowhere. As you see, she picks up Lincoln by like the scruff of his the literal scruff of his neck. I'm sorry. It's time for me to take out the garbage. Before she does that, can I try to steal the sword? I like her. <laughs> Roll me 2d6 plus... Canny. Fudge drama. <laughs> uh, okay, that's two, three, four. Technically, that's a five, actually. <laughs> still, still a hard fail. It's a hard five. Yeah. It's a hard five. Betty, as, as, this, as this tall woman... Uh, <laughs> Just takes out Crap. Lincoln. You try to grab, yeah, this tarnished copper sword. It's almost as soon as your hand grabs it, electricity shoots through your hands and your body, and you fly backwards and take four points of damage as you feel these uh, residual shocks not again. throughout your body. My back. <laughs> as this woman opens the door to the stinking pig throws Lincoln out and closes it and faces you all. I am so turned on right now. <gasps> Get it, girl. <laughs> I feel like I deserve that. Uh. Hi. Hi, I'm sorry you had to witness that. I'm not. That was great. That was awesome. Thank you. I mean, it's just... Uh. Men. 
Half Ooh. wolf, technically. Yeah, I, what was with that? I mean... You'd think if you were going to be a wolf all the time, you'd get, like, groomed, right? Like, a couple of mm -hmm. ribbons, a couple of nah, combing. Nah, he gave up. Yeah. Nah, he, he gave up. Maybe he was down on his luck, but that does not give him an excuse to, I don't know, prey literally like a wolf on women. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> that, What's your good. name? <laughs> My name's Miranda. Braga. Mm -hmm. Braga. Um, Violet, hi. Violet. Um, Betty, I'm still in the corner. Uh, Betty. I've already made enough new friends on this trip. That's Hannah. <laughs> I go help Betty up. <laughs> and I'm D. How's your back? Gross. <laughs> I take it from your attire as well that you are new to Stridus. We stand out that much, do we? I mean, same here. I mean, I just came in last night. Oh, you did? Mm hmm Last night, you say? Mm-hmm. Oh. On a pirate ship? No, I will say getting, well, we were stuck in customs for about three hours because of some, I'm guessing, incident that happened in the port. A lot of pirates. Uh, a lot of pirates. Uh, so what are you doing in Stridus? Taking in the sights, really. I've never really been to a big city. Uh, I namely roam on my own, adventure through the countryside. Namely, I sail in search of different islands, different places, undiscovered where there's possible treasure that has not been taken yet. Violet, why don't we invite her to fight alongside us? We just met her to, right now, and I'm sure she's going to be wonderful to fight with us. Hey, what, are, you good at, are you good at anything? While you're sleeping, I'm going to do something so fun to your hair <laughs> that you're, you're going to wake up and you're just going to love what you're Oh, you, know, you don't know what these, these horns do when I'm sleeping, so good luck finding that out. Can is I, everything okay? Do I need to? I can leave. No, no, this, no. This no, is please. just like, this is a good day for them. Yeah. yeah. Every, uh, every day. Um, can I get personal? Sure. Roll a 2d6 <laughs> plus heart. Well, uh, <laughs> can I get a second chance? Yes, there are five seconds. Wow! Chances. Thank you. Okay. Wow. They know what show they're watching. Mm. Yes, they do. <laughs> the Snake Eyes show. Oh my gosh, that's Seriously. a seven. This is seven. Better. Um, one with question. a seven, you get one question. Great. Um, what can... Uh, whose side are you really on? Mm. The side that pays. I mean, look, I'm, look, I, I know what you're asking. I'm not here to, to pillage the city. I'm not here to take money from the city. I am not, I'm here, honestly, on vacation. I am in desperate need of one. I've always heard about Stridus. I had a, I had a cousin who came out here and highly recommended it, 10 out of 10. Uh, like I said, never been to a big city before. I thought I'd see what this is all about so far. Uh, <laughs> I'm slightly unimpressed. Seems very cramped and dull. Mm. Yeah, you should go on Cascasaria. Yeah. Yeah. This place What's is that one. Uh, Cascasaria is the gambling one. It's very nice. It's like a spa. It's in the desert. Why didn't I go? Where is oh, it? She takes it out. Being, she takes out like she takes actually. out a map right now. Where? Oh, it's being remodeled. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she is, folds back yeah. the map back up. <laughs> it turns out the city you picked is the one that's being attacked by shadow people all the time and pirates. So that's it's not great. Here. There's like a lot of military people here too. Mm -hmm. What's your name again? The man. Miranda. 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 Mm, How you feeling, so, Smidge? What kind like, of? Sorry. Lucky. Um, I feel like, um, are you, are you bored? Do you want to quest with us? Hannah said you can join us. I start, like, exiting. I mean, I think, I, I, I mean, I feel like that was some kind of sarcastic joke that's... It was pointed. I, I appreciate <laughs> being... Well, it could be fun. Asked to join someone, but, uh, or join a group, but it's... I see that you all have something already established going on. I don't want to ruin any energies or... <sighs> that's I don't know a, if that's it's why I don't, you sigh. I don't know if it's possible to ruin the energy. Why that, are you yeah. sighing? That, was a, that uh, was a little bit of a can, sigh. Uh, you know what? You you seem so wonderful. Just for one moment, we just need to have a little... Um, we need to have a little quick... Are we doing a sidebar? Sidebar. Okay. What? What? What is your strategy? Not that just you just she said that she was saying could you join she, she, she was being she was being difficult I and, I, and I well I thought you know if we had one more person like Braga was saying we could have more people helping us figure out what's going on. Do you remember the woman that you invited? 
to join us at Cascaseria mm-hmm. that literally double crossed us. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, but be- she also didn't she, she later save there. someone? Didn't she yeah. save oh. Betty's life? Because she was oh, super yeah, no, guilty. And then yeah. die. She did die that's right. In the mm-hmm. end, it did help us. Yeah. But we don't know true. anything about Miranda. She does she seem competent? Yes. Mm-hmm. Does she seem nice? Mm-hmm. Yes. Is mm-hmm. she beautiful? She, yes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good D- things. I feel like those are all the good ones. Okay. Yeah. But we don't know her. Okay. Look, we need. We actually have to go report to the MAO, MAO oh, UR yeah. today. They wanted us to go meet up with them, so why don't we worry about that and then maybe worry about recruiting new queens. Okay. Braga, you could be my new leader. I was the leader. I know. It's okay. <laughs> okay, okay, Look, fine. Our, as D kind of comes in, look, are we going to be okay? Is We're fine. This is just the morning. It's just the morning. We didn't get enough eggy bakey. They don't have it here. They ain't never heard of it. Can I be honest with you guys? Yeah. What? Nothing. What? What? Look, I just I just feel like this is every morning. Yeah, well, kind of is. It feels like that more right now. I don't know why. But it does. I, I don't think... Uh, Hannah and I got to an extremely good place. I think we're still there. I just happened to... Did- disagree with some of your tactics i feel like i shouldn't we just don't need five yes women she, I you guys were on the same side about that that's what's weird you guys are mad at each other and you're agreeing all i'm saying is that we may want to use to our advantage people that already know how to destroy chaosiums that's all i'm I saying don't know if they know how to do that miranda this has been a fucking pleasure you see that she's like she's been uh she's been uh sharpening her spear like on this beautiful whetstone <laughs> i'm gonna let you talk to braga who's really interested nope nope i shouldn't nope i i have oh yeah. that's right yep maybe later at a different time yep. we're sorry we're sorry about this interaction i don't know why you're apologizing it's I been mean, awkward I'm just, I'm, I'm Feels. Bad. it's okay no. you have nice hair Thank you. Yeah. You have ni- You all have nice hair. Enjoy your vacation. Uh, don't go out too late at night, I yeah, think. Yeah, be careful. Mm-hmm. And if sirens go off, get, get inside. inside a building. Yep. Immediately. Mm-hmm. Re- okay, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Are, you. are you all staying here as well? Mm-hmm. Well, then I may see you. I just may see you in the morning or at night. And who knows? Perfect. Great. Well, have a good rest of your day. Oh, this is getting off. I'm, I'm betting goodbye. She picks up like her spear and she uh, puts some money on the table and heads back up into the upstairs of the inn. <sighs> that went well. So we have to go to... We ha- you said we have to go to the, the magic... Yeah, you, they, they you... said they wanted us to report in today or something. Oh, okay. I, I don't remember. It was a lot happening yesterday. Well, I mean, That's it is that girl we Tifa think... said we, should, we, were, we were supposed to have, and they were mad that we didn't yesterday, oh. but they also didn't tell us to. T- right as you say that, uh, the door opens, and there's like a bell above the door now that goes ding, 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 ding. Now? <laughs> now. <laughs> Kathiri, well, Kathiri, when she was uh, fixing the floorboards, has now <laughs> put in a bell just in case somebody else comes into her bar <laughs> to rough things up. When she's in the back. Uh, so this bell, ding, 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 ding. And standing there in kind of a, a young squire's outfit, uh, the same s- short kind of young human boy you saw yesterday with curly hair and huge round spectacles. Hello! Uh, Rat queens, yes! Hannah, Betty, Brega. Sure. Uh, Violet. I'm sorry. I'm, did I mispronounce it? I'm going it's, off of a it's, list. It's fine. It's Braga. Braga. It's Braga. Fine. I don't care. Violet and D. Uh, yes, uh, Claude here. Uh, we met briefly yesterday. Uh, I was assisting uh, Miss Tifa on well, that the handling of the port situation, uh, and now I have been I have been sent here to escort you to the headquarters. See? Headquarters of the Military Army of the United Religions. Don't look at me. Look <laughs> at her. Well, Thank just, you. Widespread eye. Just gesturing I to the entire... I think that's the right choice there, Claude. You're doing a great job. Wonderful. And I have also been told I can give you a tour along the way. Ooh. Don't we have to do something that's urgent? Well, yes, but I mean, we're going to walk there. And I can get... I could just like a walk and talk. The best thing would be for you to not talk. 
I, I like it. I, mean, I, I, it's really I like helpful it. Claude, I want, Claude, I really wanted to see hear your tour. I'm just yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, gonna trail it. behind. Why don't you trail behind then? We're that would do be that. great. Hannah, more information is better than no information. Great, then you use it. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Let us get started. Uh, as he goes back to the door and opens it and holds it for you all. Oh, and I'm actually wearing my armor today and not my stupid pirate outfit. That, that <laughs> I ripped yeah, apart to make bandages for Betty. <laughs> yeah. I um. Uh, you got I a lot grab of mileage bread yeah. and put a bunch of cheese and eggs on it, and I just kind of walk out the door. <laughs> Let's go, everybody. <laughs> and as the five as the five rat queens exit with uh, Claude leading leaving leading them, uh, immediately in the moment after Kathiri exits the kitchen holding two plates of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> don't for, don't for bargain. She just puts one plate down. And she starts eating with the other plate of eggs. As a man sits in the corner, shrouded in a cloak, and simply smiles. As the five of you walk through the streets of Stridus, as you start to make your way out of the shipping, kind of the shipping and port district into the, the northern district where the headquarters of the military army of United Religions stands. It is a towering white fortress with uh, an academy building off to the right and a cathedral to the left. As Claude, the young squire, leads you. He turns around and now is like kind of back walking and like facing you all. So what's really interesting here is um, before this was the head of the United, uh, the, the, arm, the military army of the United Religions, the MAUR, uh, Stridus was actually one of the greatest strongholds in this realm. Uh, there belonged a royal family uh, that actually owned the banks before the army came in. Well, I, if I was to tell you the truth, uh, this fortress was actually the the castle that the family lived in. There, the, the cathedral was still there. The academy that you will see later was not. That was a later addition. But yes, uh, this royal family, uh, some say they went missing. The heir somewhere existing in Stridus today. But they wouldn't really have any power because... The army's here now. So you're saying there's like a lost king somewhere in Stridus? Well, that's the rumor. Or queen. Yeah, it could be a king or a queen or a person. It's just uh, this <sighs> royal family disappeared. Hey, Braga. Yeah. I feel like that weird dream meeting I had with Arius is about the lost king about to die, not that he is already dead. I know, but the fact that this kid just brought up a thing that's in the prophecy yeah. seems relevant. I don't know. No, it does. I think it totally does. So yeah. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that, like, from here on out, we should look out for someone who might be a king and try not to kill him. Uh, I feel okay. like it's good. This is not great. I mean, I don't think he's probably wearing a crown. I don't, I don't know. Don't how know, are we going to tell? I, I just feel bad. It comes in the conversation. Yeah. I'm on the same page. Like, if I'm, if you're supposed to kill him, if I'm supposed to kill him, I'm guessing if we're supposed to kill this person. I think, like, symbolically, that I, I think we all killed, maybe it was us who killed him. Because we're the pawns. Are we the pawns? I don't know. I don't know. The analogy is like, what, you saw, like, a chessboard? Yeah. Was oh, chess, that chess with the one with the little... That's symbolism. Yeah, I just talked to my dad. Oh, like, I thought you saw the pot. I thought you saw the chessboard too. No, no, I think he knows that I'd be too confused by that. While they're talking, I want to just ask. Cla I want to be like, Claude, uh, are there rumors? Are there are there rumors of where this king could be, or where the family is, or like who's related to these people? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Well, I guess, uh, hmm. Uh, well, there's these rumors that there's like a closed off section uh, of HQ that was the royal ring, the royal wing. Ugh, say that five times fast. Uh, until you're telling me, Claude. Uh, that where I guess there could have been some paintings or papers or perhaps uh, some long remaining items. But uh, once the once that tragedy, whatever that tragedy was that happened to that family, a lot of their items were then confiscated by bandits. It was then sold. It's, that's why it's been so hard to try and find them. I mean, granted, there's been plenty of people coming into Stridus claiming to be the lost heir wanting to retake their kingdom. But, I mean, the army's here now, and now that the banks operate in much more of a democratic function, uh, there's really no need for monarchy anymore. So it wasn't the army that came in and deposed them. They were deposed before the army got here? Oh, I don't know. 
that's what you just said. Uh, just let it be known that I can't <laughs> not hear him. So I'm what? <laughs> She's listening to your story. Well, She's interested. <sighs> I'm not interested. She's real mad about it. Well, when the arm, well, when the first, well, when the military army of United Religions was founding itself, they actually came upon the empty castle. So I'm guessing that the family was already disposed of. Mm-hmm. Deposed. Uh, deposed of. I mean, both could be true. I mean, Just, yeah, uh, this is a great, this is a great story. Either one could be true. Yeah, yes. I, lo- I love local legends and stuff. So any more information you have about it, you just let us know. We'd we'll like to do. know more. Oh, yeah. Well, just lost royal family. Who's it, out there? We don't know. In fact, do you have any books about this legend? Because our, our friend Dee here is a great reader. She loves to read. Yes, and I'm sure. I, I love books. I would love, you know, what? I'm all about lost legends. Yes. Uh, the She she kind of goes up to Claude. Uh was we were reading through the Chaosium report. Great. Thank you so much for handling that information for us. Now, I would just love some light reading. Uh, and these lost legends sound so great. We all just, mm, I love reading to my girls. I love reading to these queens. I'd like to, um, I spy a battle body, like like one that like people might practice uh, sword techniques on. Yeah, like a sparring buddy. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm going to cast pres- prestidigitation and turn it into what I think the last king probably looks like. <laughs> Roll me 2d6 plus skill. Get those rolls out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but- Pretty good. That's a it doesn't matter. five, six, seven. Where are my tokens at? You have, oh gosh darn it, you have got two. You immediately got one as soon as I looked. Oh, that's funny. Well, I have, it's not enough to make a full 10. So it's semi-successful. <laughs> um, oh, it's a cantrip. So I just do it. Never mind. So I just go, look, the lost king. And describe to me like what you think this, like what is Hannah's idea of the lost king? Uh totally like uh, bearded but like ratty bearded like dready bearded uh, like this like poor hasn't person who hasn't cleaned it or bathed in years because he's in hiding uh, rags upon rags upon rags and it looks everyone knows it's a trick but I want everyone to be just a little shake it up for a second he looks kind of like the wolf wolf guy I have to use something from my imagination. Mm-hmm. You do this, and the two people that were sparring against this dummy immediately they are like, oh, uh. oh, okay. Hannah Vizari, everyone. She'll be here all week. And within an instant, yeah, your precedentation just kind of disappears, and it goes back to a, a standard fighting buddy. Yeah, great. Uh, well, thank I you. can't tell if that was a joke or... Uh, She's just bringing your stories to life. I don't know if that person actually looks like that. I mean, that person does look lost. I would have added a crown, maybe, to make mm-hmm. to show that they were a king. Well, good thinking, Cole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good thinking. That's Question a good note. about That's a, a good crown. note for the future. Yeah. Cur- curious about the crown. Uh, were there any crowns left any sort of royal jewelry oh no all the royal Pillage. jewelry was then confiscated by the banks and held by the bank of stridus that was then redistribute redistribute <laughs> uh let me pull out my notes so he pulls out like a little card redistribute re- redistributed that's how you say that word redistributed into the public, into public funds that were then used uh, to enhance uh, Stridus' stri- thriving market as he kind of gestures to these more of these enchanted billboards similar to the one that you saw upon entering Advertising Mask, the the magical cream. Uh, you see that these kind of enchanted pictures are animated and kind of advertise a number of tonics, uh, jewelry, and clothing wear. So because of because of the sacrifices of this lost royal family uh, and no one to claim their inheritance, uh, Stridus then put the money back into the town and we have become the successful and wealthy city you see today. Interesting. Hmm. So what happens if the king does show up again and like improve that they're the king or queen? Do you have to like take people's money away from them and give it back to them? See, Claude just stands there. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's just, it's just a lost legend. I don't know if it ever come true, but I guess if, if someone was really a lost king of Stridus, then maybe... Oh, no, they'd have to talk to the the military army, I guess? Or... or I, I doubt that they would hold any more physical power, but they... I feel like they definitely get their... 
their status back. Maybe even be, be, being promoted to be at the top of the, the Stridus Council. Just because of their blood? It's their own damn fault that they lost their royal status. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what happened to them at all. True. But if they didn't have the wherewithal to keep it, then they don't deserve it in the first place. Kind of like your axe, right? And we're here! <laughs> As <Too soon. laughs> Claude gestures towards these beautiful giant stone white doors that slowly begin to open. All right, this is as far as I go. The, the Grand Bishop, she wants to meet you to talk to you more in depth about uh, why you were sent here. Thank you for your time. Uh, and speaking of my axe, Claude, I just want you to know if you see a um, really well-made dwarven axe floating around, it's, um, it's mine. It matches her armor. Oh, Okay. Now that I've got a color to go off of, I can maybe try and find it better. Well, great. Made mm-hmm. really well. You you know you know what you said. Uh, that <laughs> looks turquoise. Mm. Okay. Teal. Green. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. Thanks, Claude. All right. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm going to go back out, uh, maybe join Tifa on her patrols, and if I see that axe, I will pull it out and deliver it right back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you so much for listening to my tour. It was very, it was very I don't inter- get to give it that often, thank and you. I just appreciate it. It actually was informative. You actually yeah, was, yeah. That was good. This is the oh, I didn't even get to talk about the history of the, orchestra, uh, the, the architecture and the infrastructure, but uh, we can do that another time. Next time, bud. Yeah. yeah. All right. Totally. Um, you see, he starts to look more and more nervous, just standing there. Oh, well, just go inside. I, I gotta get going. Bye. Okay, bye. So we walk inside. Yeah, you walk inside. Is he as... scared for us, or is he just not used to going in this building? As Claude hurries off. He's general, generally nervous, but... Yeah. yeah, he got really anxious to me as we got to this door. I don't know. If, uh, this this like, is a huge institution, and I don't trust it. I'm gonna like, have my axe out and at the ready, just, just in case. Because we're already down one axe, and... I don't want to have to be, like, waiting to get mine out. You have a sword still, right? Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely, of course. The five of you stand there, and as the door closes behind you, all lights go out. Hannah? Mm-hmm? Can you do that light thing? Mm-hmm. I cast light. Oh, wait, TV says, what skill? Does that count? It's on the edge of the thing. I'll say because it's on the edge, it does count. Oh, my yes. oh my god! Uh, so it's what is it? Eleven. With an eleven, yes, almost perfectly, Hannah. You cast five immaculate, like orbs of light that beautifully hover around each queen as you stand there. Don't be scared. They want to intimidate us for some weird reason. I'm not intimidated. Dated. 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 Can I scan the room for um, to see where they're going to enter from to talk to us? Roll me 2d6 plus canny. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, 9, 10, 8. Yep, 8 is fine. With an 8, Betty, you know that they're probably not going to come from behind. Mm-hmm. You see that, Betty, through the darkness, you're actually able to see that you are in this large, large entryway that just goes and ascends upwards stories and stories high. This is a hugely, hugely tall building. Uh, About three stories up are two balconies that kind of look over the left and the right of this main hall. And then you see in front of you a large grand staircase that leads up to a second level. You can see descending levels higher and higher, but these would probably be the three entryways that anyone or anything would come through. I'm going to kind of, like, nod to Violet and for us to both kind of, like, fan out so that we can't be flanked. So we're kind of, like, on like either side of the party. Kind of, like, just in case. I want to kick my orb light bulb into the main staircase to see if there's anyone down there. <laughs> you do it, and there's no one there. But now your light is all the way over there. Cool, 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 cool. I go walk over to Hannah. Can I borrow your light? And just just <laughs> I just stand next to her. Can you just go get the light? No, it's over there now. We'll walk over together. <sighs> yeah, I think we proceed, right? I think we proceed. What kind of, what do they want? Why? Why turn out the lights? I don't know. I it's don't a, know. So was that like, the only light source? Was the door? 
You can just open the door I hate again. big cities. Brog and Violet, as the two of you step forward, almost the same time, you feel one of your feet go down a little bit, Ooh. as if you've just pressed oh, no. on a tile. Oh, no. And in that instant, there are two green magic runes that appear and hold Brogly your left foot and Violet your right foot. <sighs> I hate big cities. Monarchs, come save us! <laughs> That's gonna, I don't think they can hear us. Can do anything? D looks and D starts to channel her magic towards these towards these seals and nothing happens. Suddenly you start to feel this green magic almost go up your legs and then through your waist and through your arms and through your head as this magic kind of starts to course through you. Can I cast counter spell? Roll me 2d6 plus skill. (laughs) Yeah. Fuck. Um, six, seven. Uh... Seven and nine, the spell is countered, and you forget the spell that you staked. What does that mean? Your counter spell protects you alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, with your nine, yeah, you, you cast counter spell on yourself. As Betty, you kind of, as... as Hannah, you're next to me? No, Hannah, as you cast the counter spell on yourself, it almost is like this magical energy pushes Betty, and Betty, you accidentally step on a tile as well. Lame. As you activate this rune, and this magic starts to crawl up and seep through you does as well. Does it hurt us? I, no. Okay. Oh, no, it doesn't. What does, does it feel not hurt. like? Anything? It almost feels like this warm, just kind of light sensation. Okay. You know, you asked us to come here. I don't, I don't understand what you're doing to us right now. You wanted us. We, you hired us to come. We're off our game. You sent the kid. To kid us, what what do you want from us? What is it? Yes. What is it? And soon as you feel this magic leave the top of your head, Braga, suddenly there's almost this green teardrop that appears over you, and you hear this little chime ring. And then same with you, Violet. This magic goes through you, and this green teardrop appears above your head, and it chimes. Betty, the same thing happens to you. You feel the magic kind of go through your chest, through your face and your head until it, it, it exits, forms a teardrop, and it just chimes and glows green. D takes a step forward, almost on purpose, as she stands there normally, letting the magic go through her until the teardrop emerges from her and it chimes green. My apologies, I... I must ask that the final queen that has not gone through our security check uh, please allow the spell to scan you. No! What's it scanning for? Any sort of dark evil, dark intent. You would be surprised who all disguises themselves to enter into the headquarters of the military army of United Religions. We have had not only trouble with whatever is plaguing our city now, but we've had countless terrorist attacks on this building itself, so forgive us for our security protocol. Could have had Claude tell us that Hannah. so we know what we're facing. Why are they turning I, the lights? I, I, think, I, think if, yeah, I think if they scan you, it might be bad because you have your demon dad in you. That's gone, right? I don't know. But that's gone. I'm a little unclear about where we are in the timeline gonna, about that. I'm not scared of shit. Okay. So I uh, undo this <laughs> spell, <laughs> take a step forward. Scan me. This green, you, this green rune acti- activates underneath your feet. You feel it tickles this magic me all the way up. Oh my God. You feel this magic go through you, and it goes through you, and you feel it really, like exiting through your horns, till this green teardrop appears above your head, and it takes a moment. <laughs> Before it then turns green and then chimes. Can I grab it? Past, bitch! You try to grab it, Betty, and it just, like, it just goes through your fingers. Wonderful! And as she claps, the lights come back on. Stupid. And and descending now on the stair, standing on the top of the staircase, you see this woman with just 
white, super long white hair in two braids as she wears this bishop's like dress. She has this huge cape on and you see that she has this, this very ornate white headdress as well and these lovely bell sleeves. They're just dec- decorated in kind of the gold ornaments and gold accents that you remember seeing on Chloe's attire. Just much more formal as she carries, she walks with a walking stick and comes down the stairs. My sincerest apologies. You are right. We, sh- we should have said something. We should have given you a heads up about our current security measures, but forgive us of our fears. After losing Chloe, uh, we feared who else might try and, well, sounds silly enough. If they knew that we had asked the Rat Queens to come meet us, then perhaps someone would impersonate you to infiltrate our facility, take information, or or possibly harm the MAUR. It is not common for us to reach out to mercenaries. Be mindful of that, as I'm sure you've met Chloe and the former members of the chorus. That night you necromanced the dead in Palisade, am I correct on that, on that case report? You know, mm-hmm. uh, there was never an official settlement yeah. On uh, the specifics of it, yeah. just having a quite party, frankly, it was you know. yeah a lot of hard, a lot of hard, variables. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you ask us here for a reason because mm-hmm. you know we're the only ones to do the job. Speaking of which, though, the captain of the Quintanilla, I imagine you've let her go. Yes, she's been returned to her ship. She is just staying in port for the time being to collect supplies. Her other part of her contract with us was to then take you home. Uh, unfortunately, I do not know if we can guarantee an escort once again on your way home, but that is something we can look into once the matter at hand is dealt with. Can I get personal? Yes, roll me 2d6 was heart. Woohoo! Woo! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, that's a 10. You can ask her three questions. Um... Whose side are you really on? I am on the side of the church. I am on the side of the United Religions. And I believe on the side of the world as we know it. If these chaosiums are truly powerful now, then it means that the cult of Arius has a real god on their hands. An old god at that. We cannot let that information leave Stridus or enter the world as much as we know it, because as soon as people will start to learn and hear that there are forces and beings much more powerful and much more terrifying than the gods they already worship. Oh. Well, then I'm sure chaos would ensue, would it not? Perhaps one of... Arius's goals. I believe you read the case file that we provided you. As D steps forward and pulls it out. Yes, that is all the information that well that we found in our libraries here, in our collections of reports and and tomes from the realms of past about Arius. I'm afraid I may know some more information or can possibly. Uh, Illuminate some transcripts and manuscripts, but that is all we know. And that, yes, there is a chaosium here in Stridus. Something that these fiends are trying to find. Look, I don't, I don't know a lot about magic and gods and churches and all that kind of stuff, but I, I feel like whenever a big organization tries to keep stuff secret to keep people safe, it usually doesn't end up well, and usually doesn't, doesn't stay secret for very long, so, like, I'm a little nervous about that idea. Yes. As the church, there are many things the public does not know. Well, as the magital- magical army of United Religions, there are many things we do not tell the public simply to keep them safe and not worry here. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult frame to swallow. I agree with Braga. <clears throat> Other two questions you think? Um, Should we ask her? 
Mm. So you asked her whose side she's really on, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, Should we ask her what she has that we need? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. What do you have that we need? Funny you should ask. Mm. I was going to get to it later, but there's no time like the present. Come with me. As she ascends up the staircase and takes a right, and you find yourself in this beautiful, beautiful hallway that's just this aged stone hallway, you see on the walls where the outlining of portraits once were, hang, new portraits hang in their stead, but some of them are not the right size as the portraits of the royal family that used to hang in the headquarters of the Military Army of United Religions. As the Grand Bishop leads you to her office, these two beautiful doors open up once again, and you find yourself what you can only imagine used to be the throne room in this establishment. There are these beautiful stained glass walls looking out over the ocean, and you see that there's beautiful, these beautiful tiled floors in this large stone fireplace in the corner. And all in the room, there's a desk, some chairs here and there, and a, a simple chandelier, and just a many, many, many bookcases that have just been shoved in this historic room. Come this way. Can I offer anyone any tea, perhaps? Uh, any snacks? No Earl Grey for tea. I just get headaches. Are we just? I'm just. just my brain. Trying to care, you care for No, I appreciate today? it. Appreciate care it for your needs. That's all. I appreciate. We don't it. want to give you a migraine. No, thank you. We don't need. I'm you. okay. All right. Well, don't mind if. I, please excuse me while I do have some. As the Grand Bishop pours herself a cup of tea, she takes a sip. Yes, what you need. She gently puts the teacup down. You see her start to kind of wring her hands a bit. She's nervous. We, oh, I should say, one of my inquisitors has been working on an early detection system of these things. We have been pinpointing their attacks and believe we know where they might strike next. It's almost mechanical or repetitive in some source some sense of the word apologies and well we will we fear there may be attack today right here as you see that her desk is actually a map underneath glass a map of stridus and she points her finger down and you see it's this it's the kind of the midway point between the merchants district on the west side and the residential district on the south these attacks while they do appear random once correlated into data they appear to be scheduled of some sort almost planned and thus one of my inquisitors has has belief enough that this may be where they attack next and so I ask of you I would like you to go there and handle it yourselves how our job is to get a chaosium these ink people seem to be handled just fine by the monarchs. I don't see the correlation to use a word that you just used. Oh, you do not. I am apologize. I should have stated that more clearly. Uh, the cult of Arius, you can they noticeably wear these robes that fade almost into this inky black at the sleeves, at the ro at the top of the capelet, and at the hem, thus signaling the in-between of which where Arius resides. Uh, these creatures that have been attacking us wear the tattered robes of cult members of Arius. We fear that these are somehow cult members turned rogue, now searching for the Chaosium that resides within the city. Once one of these 
fiends finds the Chaosium, we can only imagine the terror that they will create. I know you have one more question, but I got a question for you. If, oh, would you like to use it? Yeah, you should do that first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are you actually thinking right now? <sighs> Tell us the truth. You have to. <laughs> I, I am. Yes. I'm just, it's a lot. As someone who is the Grand Bishop for the Military Army of United Religions, it is our job to ensue that religious order is instilled across the realm. Ugh. Now that the old gods, or at least one of them, is appearing, there is no, there is no cornerstone from which our army rests on. If suddenly there are old gods appearing, the new gods have no power. And who would allow an army to instate religious order if there is no order in the universe already? Oh, but there's not, so... I mean, we've talked to several gods already. This is yes, old. Narigoth, Krona. Mm -hmm. I've yep. heard. So if y'all are built, you know, was it glass houses, stones, yeah, yep. all that's that it. stuff? Yeah. Exactly. Narigoth and Krona yeah, are part right. of the, the pantheon already. The new gods that were formed in our societies and cultures. Mm -hmm. Across the realm. I mean, but Narigoth like totally trashed our city, so it's not like people are like super down with the like, new gods either. This is true, but we have some stability enforcing the ideals of the current gods already. Introduce new or new old gods, I should say, into the mix. You will have total chaos everywhere. There will be nowhere for the army to instate any kind of stability. Yes, in your question, I will answer one more. I just, I'm just, would we consider the fact that we are literally up against a god? That like, we're literally being asked to kill a god? Like, like every day. Are we insane? For like a while now. That's are been we insane? The... That's why I was saying maybe more than five people wouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> you like did. I mean. Like, you know that two of us have actually met this god, yeah, right? Like, yeah. we've like chatted. Like, I was in yes. his realm for six months. So, yeah, I've thought about it a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a little overwhelming. Yeah, I, th I know. I know. Not great. If there's a chaosium here, mm -hmm. how come the cult doesn't know where it is? Yeah, isn't the chaosium made from a cult member's body? So... How did it get here? Yeah. These artifacts have been made throughout time, mm. as explained in the documents presented. Only D read that, so <laughs> that's not our fault. We got, like, the notes. Got yep, it. Yeah. The, yeah, the cliff notes. The cliff yeah, notes. But, like, why won't they just kill one of themselves to make a new chaosium. The process itself takes a long time uh, unless hmm. unless accelerated. Yeah, we saw one made right before our own eyes. One of those twins just went, Yeah, we've seen a few of it. Unless yeah. accelerated by Arius themselves. Oh. It's quite strange, but these cult members, this cult have, it has existed since time itself when the old gods existed. Do you have any clues that you can give us to help us find the Chaosium? Do you have any idea where it might be in this town? Mm. Well, that's why we are suggesting perhaps once you go to this location here, maybe watch. Watch and see what these human-like things do. Perhaps they are on the scent of it. Perhaps they will lead you there. We will not sound the alarm on this one. Thus, not to alert the monarchs. What do you... Yeah, why? Well, only you are the ones who can be entrusted with destroying a Chaosium. We don't know the intentions of the monarchs. We can assume that they are good because they are helping destroy these fiends. Why are you dancing? I'm just uh, feeling really vindicated right now. Um, we you... literally recounted the story from last night where Tebas had the same exact thing. That's not new information for I've just, us. Just two people now have, have helped us to realize that maybe they're just not... Anyway, I mean, you can't, I mean, honestly, we cannot trust anyone. All of our soldiers goes through that detection system. And uh, unfortunately, Chloe had her doubts in you. We don't communicate this mission to everyone. The only people who knew about this mission are Chloe, Tifa, Tifa's page, Cla Claude, and myself. But how do the monarchs know about the Chaosium? I don't think they know that. They do. No, I, think, I don't think they know how they know that. 
Wait, do you know that they know about the Chaosium, though? The monarchs know about a Chaosium. Yeah. This is what happens. They keep secrets. You gotta figure out who knows what. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. track it down. It's exhausting. Mm -hmm. I think it takes bits mm -hmm. of your soul. Yeah, yeah. secrets. So so. Just, yeah, it tears you apart. It sounds like they're looking for the Chaosium, too, and they know what it is, so. Perhaps they are vigilantes that are of the <laughs> extreme sort, and that they are detecting where this thing may be, trying to preemptively stop these fiends. I will not say that we do not appreciate their help. They have stopped countless attacks. They have stopped many others from dying. There have been casualties here and there, but not the masses that we could believe there would be without their help. So yes, the MAUR is indebted to the Monarchs for the safety of Stridus, but we don't trust anyone. The only people we are trusting at this time are you the Rat Queens? <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Yes. This plan of yours to not sound the alarm is part of it to see if the Monarchs show up anyway and so they might have prior idea of where the ink people are going to be? It is risky. For if we allow these fiends to roam, there is the potential for them to harm others. So upon watching these human-like things, I must ask that you take the safety of Stridus into your own hands. It's a big responsibility. We haven't talked about money yet, right? No, I haven't brought it up at all. Would you like to? I'm just it's reminding you. It's a good time if you yeah. want to. Why don't you? How much is worth saving your entire army's religion? In gold. And like and thus you're like power over the entire world yeah. apparently, as mm -hmm. we just learned. Mm -hmm. Yes. How many gold pieces is that one? Well, I can yeah. I can the gold plot them. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean we are so, so hard The military army of United Religions has a very large reserve. We are happy to reward you each well after this is concluded. That's good enough in binding for you, well. Well Is it Oh, is it good enough for the group? I mean, they own the bank, so I feel like you just say any number and they'd be cool with it. We will take care of your tab at the Stinking Pig and all expenses handled in the city as well. Oh, that, that was, was already, a given. Yeah, that was already... Mm -hmm. right. Hey, yes. Violet, Violet and Dee, I, I, have, I have a thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Dee, you've been studying this dossier. Yes. And there's this map here. As much as we could probably use your help healing while we go to the fight, do you think you might be better suited to stay behind and study this map and see if you can figure out a correlation and try to figure out if there's a pattern to their, like, compared to hey, the dossier you already have? Hey, guys, maybe I can maybe I can do it, too. Can I just, like, look at the map? Are there marks on the map, or is it just... There's no marks on this map. <sighs> I see what you're saying, Brock. I, I can stick... I can see if I can stick around, too, because... Oh, the Lost King thing. There was an amendment to the prophecy on the back of the prophecy. And I'm going to see if I can find another copy of it. Right. I think that's a good idea. I mean, it, To cool. see if someone was marking on this one specifically for us, or if this part was erased out of history. So I'll, I'll stay behind. Yeah, I think I I'll meet up with you at the Stinking Pig. Are you... I'm scared, though. I won't be able there to help if there's any kind of... If these things hit you with their weapons, I won't be there to stop that curse. Bishop? Grand Bishop? Yes. Um, our our cleric needs to study this map to see if we can figure out a pattern to these ink attacks. Um, do you guys have any healing potions or items in your in your reserves that would help us fight against a curse? Let me see. Roll me 2d6 plus heart. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for your back Does anybody aches? want to help me with this? <laughs> yeah. Can I help her? <laughs> sure. Roll me 2d6 okay. plus your Braga bond. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. Five, <laughs> six, seven. Seven. Oh, okay. plus so one. I get plus one. Yeah, okay. okay. That's fine with me. As long as one negative. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're only $60 away from a story. Ooh! A story that could play more into okay. our current story so than you can imagine. Five plus six plus seven. Yay. So. Yay. Seven. And how am I? Do I have any tokens? Braga, you have one token. Okay, so I won't use it because I can't get. So what was your total score? Seven. Seven. Without tokens. Yes, I believe. Here, she pulls out a necklace, and she goes over to a bookcase, and you see her press the crest of her necklace into a book, 
and all of a sudden this book facade magically kind of evaporates and there you see a collection of vials and potions and plants and whatnot. She slowly opens the glass door and pulls out two kind of aquamarine liquids and brings them back to you. Okay. These will age you. I'm afraid we don't have much on reserve. They're from my own collection, actually. I, Before I was the Grand Bishop, I was an apothecary, so I dabble here and there. But if you are without a cleric, that should do some help if the situation calls for it. Come, Dee. You and I must talk. Let me show you to those maps. Yes, yes, show me to those maps. Hey, you're going to keep the light on while we're exiting? Oh, the lights, yes. We can just wait here, too, also, though. Hey, oh, yes. Come on. Let's, uh, yes. On our way out, uh, please. After you all, Dee and I will stick around. Uh, please, I ask you, hurry to, well, the, the southwestern block with haste. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. If you hear from Tifa, you could tell her to come meet us out there. I just, you know, because she has swords. It's, yes. It's I true. will, if, okay. if Tifa's on, I will let her know if she's available. We don't want to arouse too much suspicion okay. as... We don't want anyone else interfering with, well, your recon, as we should say. Thank you, Rat Queens. As we're exiting, um, I would like to try to trail behind and investigate the hallways and stuff that we went through to see if I could figure out where these portraits might have moved to of the royal family or if there's any clues about where these things are stored or what, basically trying to figure out what these people look like. Roma 2D6 was canny. Please. I really want to know, too. <gasps> 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. It's like a dude just hanging out. Hi, the last I king. I love that. <laughs> With a 13. I found him. He's right there. With a 13. <laughs> Betty, yeah, as, as, as the Grand Bishop leads D, Hannah, Braga, and Violet out, you kind of trail behind. And on your way out, you see a bust kind of in the back corner of the Grand Bishop's office. You see that it is of an older, older man who has a very square jaw, a very, like, thin nose, and a very square beard to match the square jaw. And his hair is parted in these kind of soft waves. Do I... Does that look like anybody I've ever seen ever? No, and, yeah. and with, with a 13, I will say that you can deduce that this was probably the last king, so perhaps a descendant may have similar features, but perhaps not look exactly like this mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. person. How much does it look like the one that I, uh, the, the mannequin <laughs> that I charmed? <laughs> How close was I? I'll say you're about 50%. You got a square jaw. Uh, you got a square jaw. Oh, really being, good so. about that. Those are good numbers. He has eyes. He has a mouth. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's, I take Two limbs. a mental <laughs> snapshot. And if I ever see someone, if I pass by anyone who looks like him, I will know. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The four of you exit, kind of <laughs> waving behind to D and the Grand Bishop as the doors close once again. The second we're outside, I'm like, hey, Betty, you saw that room full of treasure, right? Like, you know how to get back to that if we need to? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, let's go. As the four of you make your way, uh, you start to make your way through the merchant's district of Stridus, where there's a number of stalls and vendors all kind of barking and calling. Uh, we got apples here, apples. We got some fresh apples right off the boat. Fresh apples right here. Uh, make a pie, make a cobbler, uh, make some cider if you want. Fresh apples. As you hear a number of, of merchants calling and barking, uh, promising deals and discounts galore. I buy an apple, why not? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I caught it. Yes. Can you catch that? You did. Great. Enjoy the apple. Okay. Don't forget, all of our, all of our food and drink is comped, so we can just spend all this military religion money. Woo. Yeah, all right. True. Just wanted an apple. Violet, yeah. you are in the front, and there is a stall that actually catches your eye. You see this kind of short dwarven man with just a crazy looking beard. It's kind of, it's this super white gray beard. It's, it's chopped so poorly. It's all over the place and he's balding on his head and he's wearing very simple like clothes, but you see on his banner above his stall, it says, uh, Mad Max's axes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Axes. 
Axes, you want axes? We got axes. You want a hatchet? You want a battle axe? Ma- uh, you want axes? Oh, I chopped the competition down. You got axes? We got axes. Axes. I'm oh, sorry. yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Come you- over here. You feel his his cuz he says arms to start to gesture you. Yes, come over here. Yes, you you're a you're a dwarven fighter, aren't you? Of course I am. Yes, you must be in in search of an axe. I I actually I- lost my axe. Oh. Then fate, uh, bless, bless the dwarven gods themselves, gods and goddesses that watch over us. Fate has brought you here to Mad Max's axes. Now what can I do for you? Hi. Are you looking for a hatchet for chopping wood? Or perhaps a, a two-handed battle axe that can do some pretty big damage? Or perhaps a, a throw an axe? Uh, I, I actually would be interested in, uh, in a, a, a throwing axe and a battle axe, please. Both? <laughs> Anything that we buy here is covered. I would like both. Uh, both, yeah. Do you have any Black Forge uh, axe, like branded axes? Oh, I got one. Really rare stuff of Black Forges. They haven't been producing as much as much items as they have in the past, sticking namely to armory. But uh, I got one of the one of the last axes that uh. Black Forge made himself. Is it? Does it have Two a button. teal handle and looks like it was used a little bit? And yeah. did you find it on the ground yesterday? No. Is there someone running around with another Black Forge axe? This, no. this one's been in my personal collection for a very long time. Sure. For a very discerning customers. But I see that if you know the Black Forge name, then you are a connoisseur of good axes. That's yeah. that's what she is. Nothing's more reliable than a Black Forge. I'm gonna I'm gonna let me step back into my shop. Let me go into my case, and I'll bring it right back. Well done. As you see Mad Max go back into his, <laughs> he's kind of. Same page. You see him hobbling. He's got actually an axe for a leg. As you see him walk <laughs> into his, his much more his storefront. He was in a stall, kind of out in front of his. As he goes right back into his store. <laughs> the guy from How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> is the axe head the foot, or is it the knee? It's the foot. Okay. It's like it's like it's like a foot. I just wanted to see if we were dealing with the peg leg or an axe foot. Axe foot. For the win. Mad Max comes <laughs> right back <laughs> out and he's holding this axe. You see that it is the most beautiful axe you've ever seen. Finally, do you actually remember this make of axe from your early early childhood back when your father dabbled in in more weaponry than armor. As you became older, he the weaponry side of the dwarven industry became a little too competitive and nobody was creating really solid armor and so that's when your father really took off was his armory but this beautiful double-sided axe you see mad you see max kind of balance it on his fingers and it is perfectly balanced the light hits it and it shines and glitters this was this was hanging on my wall growing up he made so many just like it it's it's perfect. I don't. I almost don't even feel worthy enough to pick it up. Oh, you're one hundred percent worthy. Yeah, I grab worthy. it and hand it to her. Roll me two d six plus guts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, five, six, seven. What's my token status? You have. Do, 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 so do, do, two do, do, or do, do, three. Do. You have two. No, no, no! I'm gonna like with my with my luck, I'll fail. Seven, okay. with a seven, uh, you grab onto the axe and you feel Max's hands grab onto it harder. I'm sorry, you're not the person I was talking to about axes. Uh, she's my <laughs> friend. Uh, I'm gonna buy it. She needs she needs some pushing in the right direction. I grab it from him and hand it. You're to just her. in a contest. Yeah, I pull it. I win. <laughs> Do you, know? you pull him with it. <laughs> Fine, then I hand him and her. <laughs> And I, I just, I just carry him for a second. He releases. All right, sorry, I got a little. I haven't let that thing out of my shop in about. Uh, no one cares. Ten years. <laughs> ten years. Ten years. Ten years. You had this. Yes, uh, it came into my possession by a, a strange dwarven man. He, he wanted to sell it quite quickly. Who was it? I can't say it's. It's a, it's a horrid, foggy memory now. I just, uh, I wish I could say. Did he have a leopard print 
like a leopard skin. Like a real cool vest. No. Oh, there was no cool vest about this guy. All right. Okay. All right. Well, then, you know, I guess let bygones be bygones, right? What is a bygone eye? Is it a coin? Ah, it's a coin. It's a good. It's a coin. I'm going to give you a discount on that. Um, I like the cut of your jib. It's on the house. She doesn't have a jib. You're a black forge, aren't you? Oh. This is a trick. I am a black forge. Then that axe belongs to you. Thank you. I uh, I just ask that uh, you tell your father, uh, uh, Mad Max, the axe merchant of Stridus, uh, appreciates his craftsmanship and has been a very huge fan his entire life. I, I find myself standing in front of a celebrity right now, and uh, ooh, you're, you have a very you have a very well known and, and beloved family. Yes, young yes, Blackford. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt, they're well known. How is your father? How is your family? Oh yes, why are you so far away? Are you here on, on perhaps a, uh, the, the com- the battle competition, the the yes. fighters competition yes. was a little over two weeks ago. Yep. Well, oh, we're still we missed here. it. Oh. Yeah, we missed it. Oh. Yes, uh, and uh, we heard it was wonderful, but vacation now and yeah. vacation now. Well, you enjoy that axe. Thank you. For Wield this. it with oh, pride. But she wanted to buy a hand axe, and actually, I, I want to buy a hand axe too because I lost a dagger at sea on the way. Oh, here, you want so. hand axes? Okay. Is he pull, he pulls out two on his on his <laughs> shelf? Uh, and give these a try. I said, these are two different weights. Uh, see how these feel, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start that second poll now, shall we? Let's get active in the chat. We will start the second poll shortly. I just want to leave him. I want to. I want to pay him for these, but then I just want to leave him a pouch of gold on his table so he doesn't. So he doesn't see it. I will say you do that. Aww. So the four of the four of you with your yes. While this is happening, <laughs> yes. Uh, I would like to have. Uh, I, I'm running around the market trying to figure out um, where all the CD connections are. I want to try to use my <laughs> ability connections. Uh, Mc- it, what it says is here is when you put out word to the criminal underbelly about something you want or need, uh, I roll for it on 10 plus, someone has it, on a 7 to 9, uh, I get something close to it. Okay. Um, so what I'm looking for is information about the Lost King, what happened to, like, what happened to the family, if anyone knows, like, maybe where they ended up, or a legend of some family, like, maybe there's a crazy old man who has a story, or something like that, I'm looking for it. All right, roll me two Ds, Ooh. Or, I've drawn a picture of the bus, because from memory, and I'm showing people, <laughs> whatever I roll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you roll, we will see what happens. Roll me 2d6. Uh, I'll, say, I'll say heart. Okay. Because you're kind of, you're trying to, actually skill, since it's it's your knowledge oh. of the criminal underbelly. Okay. Same thing. Well, 2d6 plus skill. Uh, yeah. 9, 10. Yes! So with a 10, Betty, you see in one of these, see one of these alleyways, as as Hannah, as I'm sure, has has told the entire group from what you observed of Stridus is that the main walkways connecting the interlocking kind of inner circles of the city they are cobblestone. they are cobblestone so you find yourself in a dirt alleyway where you see a few kind of figures sitting in the back on on various barrels and crates hey buddies what's up i do like a cool thieves can't thing that makes it seem like i'm a cool person to be trusted you see the person sitting there who has like this kind of this dagger, this cleaning their teeth with a dagger, nods to the other two individuals who leave. All right, now what do you want here? What was that? What do you want here? All right, you did the thieves can. All right, I'm listening. All right, I need some information, and I got some coin for you if you got it. Oh. I'm looking for someone who looks like this. <laughs> I perfectly draw the bust on a piece of paper. I'll say because you got a good success, yeah. Is that the last king there? Yeah, you know about him? Uh, looking for his descendants. Why? You got a hit on him? You could say that. All right. I, I don't need to know why you're looking for this person, uh, but... Yeah, whoever your informant was sent you to the right place because uh, rumor is the descendant is in the city as we speak. Would you have any idea where in the city? It's a big Ooh, town. It is a big town. It's a big city. It's uh, if I were a lost royal and I was hiding out, wanting to uh, reestablish myself in my uh, 
in the city which rightfully belongs to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would be hiding in the in the most hidden of places, a place where someone wouldn't expect me to be. Just that? for the right moment. What does that mean? I don't know. I wouldn't be in any pl fancy places, is what I'm saying. I would hide in some kind of a uh, shitty place, maybe a shitty inn. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe on a boat or something too. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe not even in the city. Maybe on a boat. Well, that would be good. He was in the city, and then you said he was not in the city. Well, I mean, he's in the city in the port. If I was, uh, but I wouldn't want to stand. I wouldn't want to like make my name in an inn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Shit. <laughs> I think Riley just figured it out, but there's Braga wouldn't be able to figure it out based on what I know now. Um, uh, no, I put, put it together. Was yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Well, good for you. Great. Oh no, no. Well, great. Ah. Uh, all right, buddy. Is there anything else you want to know, or uh, can well, I help you out with anything else? <laughs> I think uh, I think I think we're good here, bud. I just I slipped him a coin. Ah, thanks. I'll give you one more warning, though. What's that? Apparently, this uh, last royal is uh, not someone to be taken lightly. Some kind of fearsome person. A sword master, they say. Hmm. Also good at a bow, been trained in the wilds. This wild man come to reclaim his rightful throne. Well, Stridus. Okay, that's, that's great. As long as he's a tough, tough guy who won't. I'm just saying, down if you're gonna way. hit him, it might not be easy. I'm not really trying to hit him. Trying oh, to fight him, but, you okay. Know, this combo is really complicated. Is he a, is he a, is he a, <laughs> a boyfriend or? A, nope. is he, okay. <laughs> nope. Just. Nope, 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 nope. Thanks a lot. See you later, okay. alligator. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name? <laughs> as, as you leave the alley, right as uh, this conversation with you, as right as you have left Violet the Gold on Mad Max's stall. Hey, guys, sidebar, 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 uh -huh. sidebar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I just recap everything for them. Uh, do you think that means the king is... Is it the kid on the boat? The kid on the boat? The kid that Mona and their oh. people remember, like they said, like his parent. There was something like they had oh, a God. reason they had to keep him at uh -huh. sea, and they couldn't take him. Uh -huh. Great guess. Great he... guess. I, I went straight to Barbarian Dave, so yours is way better. <laughs> uh -huh. Way better guess. Does, do any of these guys look like this? And I showed the picture that I drew of the bust. Do they look anything can, like this? Can we recognize? Can we roll or see if we can? I will say that the, the the young boy on the boat had a very had a very uh, heart shaped heart shaped uh, face. Okay. Okay. And Barbarian Dave has an oval shaped face. This okay. is a very okay. square jaw. All right. Did, hold on. What, hold the but you can see really. why suddenly it was like, oh my god, that's the yeah. yeah. That's really brilliant, good. Brilliant. Um, hold on a second, and I'd like to go meet that man in the back alley. <laughs> Okay. All right, everyone. <laughs> take two. Take you two. come down, and he's just sitting there. And I do the cool, like. Do you? Do you? I Roll do. me 2d6 with skill. <laughs> Hannah. We are $10 away from a yes, very fun plot I do. thing. 10. Oh, my God. <sighs> I will say, how describe to me just real quick how you know how to have you. And when did Betty teach you this? Can you give me a tale? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, One day. One day when Betty was really sick and she needed a specific type of drug to feel better. Uppers and downers. She said, <laughs> go down this path to meet my local druggy quack. And I went to meet quack, but she taught me the very skilled handshake signal that she must perform with him in order to know that she is in fact herself. Was that the storyteller? Because it was really captivating. <laughs> no, the storyteller is very cool. That is not the storyteller. That was a story told. <gasps> so I do. But Hannah, yes, you do the you do the thieves can't incredibly, almost impeccably well. All right, uh, are you? I'm guessing you're with the uh, the smidgen that just Nothing. came through here. Some might say that. <laughs> Are you looking for this uh, last royal too? No, I'm looking for some drugs. <laughs> Why are you doing my accent? I'm not look. I'm not doing your accent. I'm from the corner. She's trying to fit in. It's fine. <laughs> what drugs you want? You can't just say drugs. You gotta give me what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take three drugs, please. Well, first of all, 
I couldn't bring any paraphernalia, <laughs> so I need paraphernalia. And second of all, like, so I'm looking for like a contractable bong. So I want a contractable bong, and I also want some good old hash. This is what I got. He opens his coat <laughs> and puts like a tiny bong and a tiny satchel of something in your hand. Ah oh, shit! Ah oh, shit! Just get out! <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> so I, uh, I uh, light up as I'm walking out. You do, and uh, it's just like it's normal. Uh, uh, a wizard weed. Wizard wizard weed. Oh, I feel like I'm back in college. As the four of you start to make your way, you start to see where the residential district begins and the merchant district ends. But there is one thing that catches your eye off to the left. On the edge of this merchant district, you see a tiny theater set up. A small miniature stage. Thank you, chat. And you see a few children standing in front, some sitting down, some applauding as the curtain begins to open. And you start to see a beautiful story played out in Shadow Puppets. And the story is as such. Once upon a time, there lived a man who was at the forefront of the arcane arts. He was a masterful wizard, capable of things you can only imagine. He and his wife lived happily together, and then they had a child. Unfortunately, the mother died in childbirth, and the man, saddened by the loss of his love, dedicated his life to his newborn daughter and abandoned the arcane arts to become a toy maker. He became well known throughout the land for the most beautiful toys the world had ever seen. The softest teddy bears, the most stately wooden soldiers, and the most beautiful dolls you have ever seen. As he traveled throughout the world selling his goods, Unfortunately, one day, his daughter became sick. A sickness that the world had not seen in some time. He took her to doctors, to physicians, to apothecaries alike. And yet, science and magic could not determine what was wrong with the girl. The man searched far and wide throughout the realm, searching for herbs, spells, and the like, desperate for a cure for his daughter. However, once he returned, and then you hear an explosion off to the right. And ladies and gentlemen, when we get to $1,000, you actually get to hear the rest of the story. So that is if we hit $1,000. As the children were enthralled and you see this old woman handling the shadow puppets behind the scrim. Like I said, there was a, br a brash explosion as humans, people, dwarves, orcs alike within this merchant, this packed merchant quarter start to flee in terror. The four of you notice that the sirens are not going off. As you see three of these fiend-like figures having busted through a wall and the rocks and kind of debris from this explosion kind of pouring out. What do the four of you do? Guys, I think we're, I think we're supposed to observe them and see what they do, right? That's the whole point of there not being an alarm. As long uh, as they're not killing the, anyone, I thought the right? alarm wasn't to, to, was to not draw the monarchs in. Yeah, well, that's that right. too, but... I, and then I just want to take my throwing axe and go for one. You just want to throw your throwing, your yeah. new throwing axe. Yeah. Okay, roll me 2d6 plus skill. Oh, dear. Oh, no! We got a second chance? We have uh, four. Okay, I'm taking it. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god! Uh, two, four, six, and then I have a token, I believe. You cannot use token tokens. on second chances. Then I failed. So describe to me how at first you failed and then you failed again, Violet. Okay, so I take the, uh, I get the new throwing axe and then I, <laughs> I, I, I take it out and then I realize I got, I have a terrible splinter from it because it hasn't been polished. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, all right, I'll throw it anyway. And then I go to throw it uh, with my left arm and then it throws behind me. The head falls off. Yeah. It just, throw, it just goes behind me. Oh, I just great. lost control. Violet, you throw this axe behind you, and you hear someone in the back go, ah! Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and now you no longer have this throwing axe. <laughs> I just hand you the axe I just bought. Um, I I pull out my, my, my trusty axe, and I raise it, and I say, we don't need belt buckles. We don't need matching uniforms, because we got each other. We got our rat queens, and we are our bitches. And then I'm going to roll War War Cry, my new All right. move. Yes. Oh. What is this new move? Let's see how I roll, and then I can say what happens based on it. <laughs> um, so uh, it's plus heart, right? So I have six plus seven. So I get to choose one of the two things. So this, this is a new, this is a barbarian option uh, that either... We're going to maybe modify this one once mm-hmm. we have a chance to for the new system. But as it is right now in the Dungeon World system, uh, my allies are rallied and take plus one forward, or your enemies feel fear and act accordingly. I think for this one, especially because these are like ink monsters and they're not play, they don't play, don't feel fear as a thing. So the rest of you all have plus one now on yeah. your combat uh, during yes. this combat. Yes. So that was me rallying you. I don't, but y'all do. That is wonderful. So kind. But maybe belt buckles would be cool. I don't know. I'm still into it, though. I mean, yeah, I think we should do it. We should consider it. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of Hannah's call because she's got it's her thing. Yeah, it's true. Thank you all so much for the combo. I see that there was just a combo uh, contributed to. It's, it's an open combo. Oh. So I will go ahead and roll 2d4 to see who this combo Ooh. happens to. And then I will announce it accordingly. Oh, I was going to say, let's go ahead and just give it up to the two. I love that. Let's That's do it. That's true. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and combo you two. Alright, Hannah. I Teamwork don't think the, I don't think our work. objective is to destroy these things. I think it's to catch one and question it or figure out what it's gonna do. Well I for sure can make a cage around it, so let's kill the other two and trap one. Okay. Uh so <laughs> uh fine. We're gonna we shall, you focus on trapping, we'll focus on killing. I'll be the distraction. <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah. The old r- r- reverse, reverse. Distraction tactic. Cage. The, <laughs> the reverse <laughs> distraction tra- traction cage. Yep, it's the reverse, reverse distraction traction cage. It's a reverse distraction because I, uh, instead of trying to call out to it, I just start running away hoping it notices me <laughs> and chases after me. There! Go get her! And that's what I do, because it's a reverse distraction. There! And as it uh, runs by, I cast Cage and uh, trap it. I will say, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Betty, you start to bolt as you feel this. You can feel this thing coming up on your heels. It's almost as if like you start to feel a little bit of fear in your system, oh, because... Great. Uh, the last time one of these things attacked mm-hmm. you, it almost nearly killed you yep. with its cursed weapons. And as I'm running away, I'm like, oh, I'm very scared. This is terrible. Please don't chase me. Don't, I'm not so, me. I'm so proud of you, Smidge. And Hannah, yes, you immediately withdraw your wand and you cast this cage and almost this red electric cage kind of comes down on this fiend. You see it's now trapped in the middle of the street as it tries to slam itself up against your magical walls. You are going to have to stay here, though, and make sure nothing happens to you so you can focus on keeping this thing locked down. Oh, okay, great. (laughs) Ah! I, like, just bark at it. As you bark at it, it takes its knife and it throws its... (laughs) It, it it, like, kind of pokes out at you. She can't do shit, Anki. You see it stare at you with, like, its hollow socket face. (laughs) Oh, God, kill the other two. Kill the other two. We're on it. Um, uh, You go left, I go right? Yes. The two of you run into this building, this kind of collapsed building where these three things originally uh, came, like, kind of exploded out of. Uh, you see that there's one of these fiends holding actually a long sword instead of two daggers, now kind of climbed up on the rubble, brandishing a sword at you, while the other uh, brandishes two daggers and is kind of pacing in the entryway of the now destroyed face of the building. 
Which one do you want? I'll take daggers. I guess it's sword. And I go for the sword and kind of like try to parry with it. Got it. Roll me 2d6 plus guts. I have a question just like watching them as we fight. Uh -huh. Do they appear to be like shadowy figures of like, is like one like an elf or is like, are they just like, is there no traits whatsoever? There's no distinguishable features whatsoever. Okay. They just almost look human-like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So that's a that's a twelve. <laughs> you come up with your axe, and right as this fiend tries to brandish its sword at you, you immediately parry with it with <laughs> your axe, mm -hmm. and you two are kind of in this contest until you're able to, yeah, with the strength of your axe, you're able to actually knock the sword out of its hands. Nice. And now it stands there kind of open. Uh, Violet, the one with the two daggers, has now just, like, rushing towards you, both daggers brandished. What do you do? Perfect. I'm running towards it with my sword out, and I'm ready to just stab it in the heart. Only 2d6 plus guts. And you get a plus one from Braga's thing. Y'all, yeah. yeah. I am rolling badly. Uh. All right, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Plus your guts. Uh, uh, no, that's um, five plus one is six plus, oh yeah, plus seven plus uh, seven. Great. Seven. Violet, you have four tokens. Wow. Yeah. Yay, thank you. Okay, let's use them. Okay, so you want to use three, three. to make it a 10? Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So yes, uh, as you take, yeah, you're able with with your sword. It just goes like it's just quickly you pierce through this thing's heart, <sighs> and you see this inky black start to kind of course and start to coat your sword. <sighs> and then is it so? It's still alive. It's still standing there a bit. You know that these things will not go down with one punch. Mm -hmm. These things are kind of terrifying. Betty, you have just seen that Hannah has successfully captured this fiend. Mm -hmm. You now see that Braga and Violet are doing a pretty good job of taking care of the other yeah. two. Braga having destroyed one of their weapons, Violet having pierced right through the heart of the other one. What do you want to do in this situation? I want to try to subdue the one that's in the cage um, by using drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell they're kind of humanoid. I don't know if they're going to react to the stuff that I have the way that I would like alive people would, I guess. Um, but I'm gonna try. So I wanna try to administer two, uh, like, sedating drugs. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Roll me 2d6. Plus, will this be? Plus skill? I'm gonna say skill. Okay, I'll use my big dice. Oh, God. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. okay. I'm gonna okay. keep that one. So that's uh, eight, nine. Oh, plus uh, the Braga, so yeah. ten. Yeah. I like this one. What, what a gift you gave us. <laughs> With a 10, I will say that with a 10, your aim is true. You do not end up hitting Hannah with these sedation mushrooms. <laughs> However, as you throw them at the humanoid, you, it, you land, it, these mushrooms land and immediately kind of explode into this, this. What color are your sedative mushrooms? Yellow. A yellow. This kind of yellowy haze and this yellowy smoke. As you see, you notice for the first time getting a close look up at this creature, Fiend. While they are human-like, they don't have noses. Or they do have noses. There are no holes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Their sockets are concave. There are no eyes. Oh, that's so spooky. Uh, and yeah. their mouths. This one is just a line. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah, God. Oh. Some nightmare stuff here. Yeah. Wait, Hannah. they're like dolls. Mm -hmm. Hannah, roll me 2d6 plus skill. Oh, shite. <laughs> plus Seven, one. Seven. Plus eight. Great. So it's nine, ten. Those are your last two tokens. Yeah, I mean, that was a Thank you for tokens. With a ten, Hannah, you are able to, yeah, you're able to stand your ground. Nothing has shaken you. You're able to kind of focus and keep your mind focused on keeping this cage intact. Am I also able to scan the periphery? Well, uh, never mind. I can't. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to keep my focus. Well, if you want someone to scan the, per if you want someone to scan the area for you, you're going to have to have somebody else do it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. I'm, so, um, uh, bet, uh, just make sure. Uh, just go, go scope out where they came from, that broken wall, and make sure the monarchs are anywhere around. Okie dokie. Good job uh, on getting yeah. them high. Also, as much as I would like to have just overpowered us, it isn't plus one ongoing. So 
Just one. You only get one. Okay. So you guys Got use it. Them all. So you just, just used it. I was about to be like, was like, is that the most OP thing yeah. you could have done? Well, this the thing game. is, when I do the other one, the what are you waiting for? It is plus two damage ongoing. Yeah. But that's wow. damage, not successes. So it's right. like, that's not for our system what to figure well, that thank out. You, but uh, I was like, yeah, this feels it. way more OP than I think it probably deserves to be. And I looked at it again. We all got So, so Brog, you that. have just used your axe to parry the sword out of this fiend. You see, though, as it stands in front of you, almost its hands that have these kind of razor-sharp claws mm -hmm. start to then drip in this kind of black inkiness. All right, I'm not gonna mess around with this thing at this point because, like, I don't want to get I don't want to get what happened to Betty to happen to me because, mm -hmm. like, if I go down, we're pretty screwed. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just go brutally on, like, uh, when I did, like, what I did with when they attacked Betty and I went like right up through it. I'm I'm doing that like as far as fast as I can. I'm trying to take it out as, quick, as quickly as I can. Roll me two d six plus gets. Yeah. Do I have any tokens right now? Uh, this is the tokens as I stand. Hannah has zero. Violet has one. Braga has one. Betty has two, and you have three second chances. Okay, so that's good to know. Three second chances. Cool. Okay, let's roll. Wee. Wee. <laughs> oh yes! my gosh, that's amazing. Oh holy that's like a 14. Holy You're good today, kids. Holy. That's 14. They're <laughs> oh, fine. You've solved my fighting riddle. <laughs> Yay. With to, a 14. To quote our friend, was the answer to kill it? <laughs> With a 14, describe yeah, describe to me this once again this shot or this yeah. this strike. It's like not even like I just I just go like like we had the parry. I see the claws coming out and it's almost like a fluid motion where I come back around and I just rip it right up through him. And then I think because that was a 14, I think I just go ahead and make a swing across the neck coming through it. As well. It's like it's like one it's like one fluid motion of like I say I do that. With the with the big axe, and then I kind of hold it, and then I use my hand axe to go for the neck. Since I just Ooh. bought this cool hand. Oh no, I gave it away. So, so I'll I can't just do say, that. I just say you yeah. do the big swipe. Yeah. So you now cleave this I, like, thing. Flourished. Yeah, you flourish. Right. You've cleaved this thing very directly in two, and yet you've given it a nice slit across the neck as it stands there in just kind of this black goop continues to just seep out of this thing. You see it start to then shudder and kind of shake as it still is trying to hold some kind of ground against you. These things, they're terrifying in their determination to stay alive. Yeah. Violet, you have now just brandished your sword out of the one that has attacked you with the dual daggers. However, you did not disarm it, so now these daggers are coming <laughs> directly towards you. What do you do? I want to... Uh, I want to block them both. I just want to do that. Wonderful. Roll me 2d6. I must say plus skill. Okay, great. Parry. <laughs> yeah! <Yay! laughs> that is a 14. <laughs> a 14. <laughs> Describe to me how you parry. <laughs> okay, great. So I pull it out, and then I see these daggers coming out at me, and I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And then I just just hold up my sword so strongly that it it makes it makes this creature fall backwards. I will say yes. The impact of this fiend coming at you with both daggers, you have like yeah, you grab the other end of your sword actually, and uh -huh. you're able to pulse it. Great. And as soon as it hits that, yeah, it is sent flying backwards and is now prone on the ground, has released the daggers, and it's still bleeding out in the chest. So you see it slowly starting to scramble and kind of hold itself on its feet. This one as well, not looking so good, but still resilient as if holding on to the life it was given. Betty, what do you do? Um, I'm running, as Hannah suggested, I'm running towards the uh, where the where the fiends came from. Um, but I, as I'm doing it, I, I'm behind, I yell behind my back, you guys are doing great, just kick him in the teeth. All right, let's do this. And then I, I go to the, um, I try to investigate basically where they came from to see if I can find any clues about why they came out from there. Roll me 2d6 plus canny. Okay. Woo. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Woo! -hoo! So how many, that was, you have two tokens? Yeah. Uh, eight, nine, 10. I still have two tokens. This is yeah. the yeah. best game So you're spending ever. two? Oh, no, I'm not. No. So this, is, this is eight, and then I have nine, 10, 11. I have three candy now. <laughs> <laughs> So what specifically are you looking for in this house? Can you just be excited that we're rolling one I'm good? I'm so <laughs> happy for you. <laughs> Story-wise, how dare you be so good at my bad boys? <laughs> what are you looking we needed for? This win. We, we haven't had win. one yet, so let's just have this. Um, I'm looking for perhaps uh, places where the like the dirt has been clawed away at, where they're searching, or maybe if like an uh, entry point from where they came out of. 
Um, like, where, where, where is where they originated from? Because they came out of that wall, right? They came out of that wall. So, yes, they came from inside the home. Mm -hmm. You notice that there is actually, instead of an, ex an equal explosion on the opposite side, you actually notice that there's a large window open over the kitchen where they came in. Son of a bee. I go, I just I pop out of that window. What do I see? <laughs> You pop out the window and you see an alleyway that connects the other residential areas to each other. You see that there's a collection of houses. All these apartments in Stridus are so tightly compact. They're very much like townhomes. They're so niched and like just packed together that you're facing essentially kind of the back alleyway of a lot of these homes together. Um, I want to go back into the house uh, and look for wh wherever they blew the wall up. Is there anything on the ground? Any like any signs of them trying to dig for something or like open doors or whatever? You see that near the explosion, there is a tiny chest. That you see there were scratches have been made and it's actually open and inside you see toys what kind of toys what kind of toys standard toys tiny wooden toy soldiers uh an assortment of little uh animals painted wooden animals it is, it is a child's toy chest what they were looking for and what they hope to find in there you don't know Mm, I take one and throw it in my bag, pop back out. Wonderful. <sighs> so, you you oh, can find see, one the scratches more thing. are on the outside of the box, not the inside of the box. Exactly. Okay. You have one more question. You have one more thing you could look oh, for in right. this space. Uh, did, 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 no, I had it. Um, is there something that indicates why they are becoming violent? Like, if they didn't find what they were looking for, why are they just busting out and getting violent? I don't know. Uh, what, 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 where, when, why? Or did um, they kill someone in here? Maybe, I don't know, is there something here that I'm not, that I'm missing, I guess? You unfortunately do see the body of, of an older elven woman by the kitchen on the ground. Oh, no. Is she, she alive? She is not alive. You see that her blood has now been tainted with kind of this blackness, so you can assume that one of them got her, gave her the curse of the unclosable wound, and that is what she died from. Sorry, lady, but at least we have some clues now. Um, I jump out to join the rest of the, the queens. Wonderful. Hannah, one more time. Roll me 2d6 plus skill. You got this. If Braga and Violet can take care of these things... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! Five. Ten. Ten. Describe to me how you are staying so focused right now. I'm so high. Because <laughs> 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 that weed was good. And I only did good on my tests when I was smoking wizard weed, which was hard to come by, surprisingly, it made you. But this shit was dick. <laughs> I so like Mellow just, Hannah. Yeah. It is keeping you... So darn fun. And I like I like grooving to like a, like an imaginary music in my in my head. I'm like dun 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 like whatever this world's reggae would be. I'm like. <laughs> Meanwhile, within this <laughs> THC stands for Tiefling Herb, herb oh. Chronic. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> or uh, what's CBD? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll think of it. <laughs> Later. Chat, what is CBD <laughs> in this world? Hannah, as you focus, you see that... Conjuration. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You see that inside of your, this, this, your magic cage, this thing is losing its mm. mind. It is trying to... You see it's almost crawling up on the ups, underside of your magic, which seems utterly impossible. As you are kind of relaxed and focused, the things that this fiend is doing underneath your magic is unsettling yet you are able to keep yourself composed and not let the fear consume you as it continues to throw out its daggers at you try and it just misses and it tries to just claw at you harder and harder as its feet start to dig into the actual cobblestone as this black blood starts to come out of its feet just chill it up just 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 to chill it up come on you can be chill weird little ghost chill it up Braga. Is mine still alive? 
Yes. Okay. I have an idea. All right. I'm going to, instead of trying to kill it, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to dis dismember it, like take its arms and legs off. Because if it's like keeping itself alive by force of rage, if I can like cut its limbs off, but preserve its, like keeping it alive, that might actually be better for us to like capture it. You already, how many do you want to capture? You already got one. That's true. So maybe I'll try to kill the one I have. But All right. I'll keep that in mind to tell them for the other one. Fantastic. So, Ro what do you want to do with this last one? Uh, I just want to like I want to like just try to deliver like a fatal blow. Like I, I, I want to remember what the monarchs did like when they were because like, they definitely killed some of them. So I want to try to like recall what they did and just re replicate that. Do you remember? Yeah, it was it was namely like a blow to the chest and a blow to the head. Okay, you've got to finish off that cut. Kind of you've made it. You you were able to slice it kind of diagonally really really well and cleave it mm -hmm. completely well the slice of the neck though because it was a flourish was not as deep it was a cut still okay but you're going to definitely need to dismember it yeah so that's going to be the focus now it's going to be just getting like like going so i'm going I'm to do axe and then i still have one of my curved daggers so i'm going to kind of go like dagger up that's like my goal roll my 2d6 plus guts yeah get it get it Oh, it was bound to happen. It was bound. To it's happen. okay. Happy so that's a six, and I do have Eight that ball. one token that I didn't Eight use earlier. Ball. So now I'm going to spend that token. All right. Wait, wait uh, second chance? Should I do a second chance for yeah. token? Okay, I'll do a second chance. I'll leave my token. All right, we'll leave your token. You will take a second chance. Yeah. yeah we got a lot of them. Okay. Reroll, please. I just want you to kill it and get the glory. That's glory. That's pretty glorious right now. You should. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Very good decision. <laughs> that's a fourteen. So describe to me at first you did not succeed, but then you knocked it right out of the ding dong park. I think what I think what I describe is actually what happened. Like I went for my axe and I missed it, and like I actually dropped my axe, and then like it like started to move, and I had like a hesitant moment of like I I gotta do this now. So I grabbed my curved dagger out and I just like went right up through it with the dagger. As yeah, you go right up through it with the dagger, you kind of yeah, it's a new gash entirely. Instead of cleaving it like horizontal on the face, mm -hmm. you have just now severed it vertically. It's like through a, it's its like face. a pike, yeah, like yeah. a spike, like my my, my yeah. And luckily, I will say, because of that success, you're able to, even though your hand is very, very close to this thing's blood, this known acidic-like blood, mm -hmm. you are able to kind of yank your hand out just in time so that none of this inky black sludge gets on you. Yeah. As you see the pieces of this thing start to crumble and fall to the ground, this once kind of white, shadowy-like figure now separated starts to melt essentially into a pool of kind of black inkiness as its body starts to deteriorate into gray dust. All right. And I grab, I pick up my axe off the ground and I drop and put it back in its sheath. Wonderful. Brog, you look over at Violet. Violet, you have just sent this thing pretty prone. What would you like to do? I would like to, uh, n now that it's laying on the ground, I would like to decapitate it. <laughs> Roll me 2d6 plus guts. Chill it up. Just kill that thing, kill it up. <laughs> Just kill it, kill it up. Oh fuck! Second chance. Second chance. chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One more left. Just use that second uh, chance. We have one Jesus. more second chance. <clears throat> um, what, what's the um? It's what's the, is it skill? Guts. Guts. Okay, that is a seven. Hmm. So, what was your first roll? Bad. I can't remember now. <laughs> it was a fail. Okay. fail. So describe to me, at first you failed, and then start to describe your mixed success, and I will finish it for you. Okay, great. I um, I go to um, decapitate this creature, but I I slip, and I almost touch the arm that it's that's laying on the ground. And um, so then I, uh, now that I'm sort of down, I take my uh, sword, and then I decapitate it but I fall on part of the arm. My thoughts exactly, yes. Violet, while you do, you have able to, you were able to successfully kind of nail it through the chest. It's kind of where its energy center was. You then are able to, yes, yeah, slice, you decapitate it, severing its mind center. And yeah, as this thing starts to fall into the ground, yes, you slip and you catch yourself and you immediately put your right hand, or what's your, what's your accent, what's your sword hand? My right. You put your left hand down to brace yourself and it is right down into a big pool of that inky black sludge. Violet, you, oh boy, uh, you take five points of damage <gasps> as you feel this sludge 
start to break down your glove and then break down the skin on the palm of your hand as your hand starts to feel a fire that you have never felt before. I run over to her and I pull up one of those potions they gave us and I dump it right on her hand. Luckily, because you do have those potions, as mm-hmm. soon as this kind of this aquamarine liquid hits your hand, you still feel this pain because you start to feel that like your palm, your palm muscles are now exposed as this sludge has melted off your glove and your skin, your top skin layer. But luckily, as this cool liquid begins to hit your hand, it stops, it immediately washes out all of that black sludge. And your hand starts to feel cool. It doesn't heal itself, but it gets that gunk off of you. <sighs> Thank you. I look around for something to like wrap her hand up with, so it's not like exposed muscle. Roll me two d six plus canny. Ugh, I don't. I don't find anything. I got a four. Yeah, you don't find anything. There is nothing. So, Violet, unfortunately, right now you have a very exposed wound. You just have to make sure that nothing happens to your hand until it is bandaged. Nice hand you got there. It'd be a shame if something Mm -hmm. happened to it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it would. The two of you, while yeah, you, you, you're not able to find anything for Violet, but you look over. Betty, have you just exited the house now? Yep. Yep. Wonderful. Um, I want to continue to... I want to go over to where Hannah is rocking out to whatever it is she's rocking out to you. Um, Hannah, Hannah, come on. We've got to figure out how to do this thing and get some clues. Oh, all right. Don't distract me. All in good time. This is the best I've felt in quite a long time. It doesn't bode well for me that the fact that I only feel good is while I'm high, so maybe I need to deal with that. But yeah. I have a really good idea how I might be able to shake some answers out of this thing. Or find out where they're actually coming from. All right, tell me your plan. Maybe I'll help you, but maybe I won't. Oh, what do you want to do? Well, no, you tell me your plan. I was just going to shake it. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Your plan to shake it was literal shake it? Okay, until what? Until it shows me the direction that it wants to go in. Oh, that's actually not a bad plan. Okay. What, what were you going to do? I was just going to subdue it and beat it up a little bit so that I could figure out which way it was going to go. Oh, well, let's see if mine works. That's it's about the same thing. Kind of. Yeah, I'm going to okay. rub it around. The, hit you, it, hit it in the head. Can you please do your thing? Roll my 2d6 plus skill. Please. The, the good luck streak could last. We have one last second chance. <laughs> I'm going to use it. All right. Because it just can't Stick get ice. worse than that. Uh-huh. That's what they all oh, say. Oh, gosh. This is great. Uh, Back to where we started, everyone. So, wait. That counts. It, it does, but it's it's still a fail. So, two fails. Mm-hmm. I'm like, shake it up, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it up. And when I lift up. It was worth, it was worth a try. <laughs> yes, yes, I had to do it. The, yeah. the cage. I just don't have the bottom of it. Nope, created. it was literally like a <laughs> cup on the ground, and you have just lifted up the cup. And and then I realized that, so I swoop to catch it. And I do catch it, but essentially only catapult it. Like, so it's like a... Uh, and, like, basically I throw the fish out of the water. But it does go in a direction, and now we can follow it. I will say this... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Hannah, as you throw it up in the air, you toss it directly up, and it starts to come directly back down onto you as it lands on your shoulders oh and digs God. its fingers into your shoulders. You take four points of damage. Why? As you feel this thing's blood start to course through your shoulders. What? Quickly, without after it's released its grasp on you, it, like, leaps off and starts to scuttle into the streets actually in the direction of where you just came from as it starts to make its way towards the small stage that was near the edge of the residential district and the merchants district uh, I follow I chase after the little little thing can I, we I see follow it? the smidgen we can see it yeah, yeah. okay yeah we're, we're going we're healing going. potion healing potion uh, yeah I, I run up to Hannah and give the other, other, other healing potion healing yeah. potion yeah Hannah you throw the healing potion into your two kind of these two puncture wounds these four puncture wounds on you your shoulders as uh, the the seeping black inkiness is washed out you still are like wounded right here listen I've been punctured by a cat before but this is worse 
you see this fiend kind of shambling over as it runs towards this small puppet stage, and you see it start to just tear apart this stage. It then goes and finds a chest, and it starts clawing at this chest, trying to get the chest to open. There is a lock on it. As this thing takes its knife and starts to keep jabbing and punching and just jabbing at the lock. I want to um, run up behind this thing, this creature, and try to kick it away and get the get the chest from it before I can open it. Okay, it's a pretty big trunk, but yeah, oh, really, I, I it's like a big it's like a big trunk. Um, okay, well then this, that case, this tiny stage was on top of. In this case, uh, just kick the kick the monster away. Great, roll me two d six plus guts. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that right. is a uh, ten. That's Describe ten. to me this kick. <laughs> um, I run up to the stage and I grab the rod where the curtain is hanging and I like I do a double swing and I just like kick with both feet um, behind the head of the the creature and just like knock it away from the chest and I kind of land on the chest like this one's mine. You kick this thing and it smacks up against the wall and its head hits it really hard. It actually hits this kind of like outlying stone where the edge of a windowsill is. So you not see like the part of this thing's head is cracked as it stands there and kind of wobbles and it's just standing there as the four of you surround it. Are there like pieces of debris from the stage that it just smashed apart? Like 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 sticks and stuff? Yeah, you see that there's like a few sticks here and there, there's tattered curtains and whatnot. Alright. As this thing, I mean, do you wanna interrogate it? Just get stabby. Yeah, I think hey, I, I think got, we're I, getting I think we got all the clues we need. You can go ahead and kill it. Yeah. yeah. We'll and I got, and actually I go from. I go I go Violet, the curtains, like for your hand like I like I kinda like raise my hand and point to the curtains. And then I I like take a piece of like the stage, like a, like a spike almost, and I try to like jam it through the thing's head. Before you do that, before you roll, mm -hmm. it stands there. And almost for a moment, it loses its chaoticness. And it points to you, and it points to you, and it points to you. The markings on your palms that don't appear often suddenly start to appear. I don't think that we have ever seen ours yeah. before. No, so you are noticing that you have a mark similar to Hannah's on your hand. Violet, you are the only one without one of these. Well, her hand has no skin on it. so That's that true. <laughs> <laughs> That's so you don't know if it's actually on you or not. As you see the mouth of this thing suddenly... The jaw just pops open, uh -uh. and you see this mouth. Gray! Golden one! Uh. The friend! The king! The ruddy! As it starts to slowly go towards you, Betty. Ah, none of that. Um, Wait, do I get to attack it? Yes, still? you can still <laughs> yeah. to attack it. But this thing is going towards Betty. Yeah, because I'm extra going to attack it. It's going towards Betty. <laughs> I've already like let it one of these almost almost kill her once. I'm not going to go for it again. <laughs> All right, All that's right. a that's going to be a eleven. With an 11, I will say, yeah, you get to pierce through this thing. Where do you want to pierce it through? And I'll say, as you pierce it, you get to kind of keep it in one place. You want to pierce it through its mouth, or do you want to pierce it through its heart? Um, I think it's heart. I think I want to, like, push it up so it's, like, it's kind of, like, pinned mm -hmm. to the wall behind it. So, like, if it, it, like, can't move out. It's, like, a, it's like impaled, basically. Yes. You impale this thing. Yeah, you take this, this, yeah, this wooden, this kind of broken wooden panel from the stage, kind of, like, the edge frame of the curtains, and you pierce it right through it, and it just sticks to this wall. And I go, how's that for a friend? And I'm like... A friend. A friend. The gray. The golden. The friend. The king. The ruddy. The gray. The golden. The king. The friend. The ruddy. What's this somebody, looking at when it says the up. gray? It's looking at you when it says the gray. I'm sorry, what is it looking at when it says the king? It looks down at the ground as if one of you was not there. Cool. What's the gray and mean? And it looks at Violet for the ruddy? Uh-huh. Okay. The gray. What does it mean? The gray. What does it mean? The toy. 
The oh, pawn. God. The Does pawn. it look at any of us for the toy? No. Okay. It, it well, actually, yeah, it starts to claw towards Betty. Cool, 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 cool. I want to open up this chest. All right. Roll me 2d6 plus skill. Okay. That is eight, nine, and I'll use one of my tokens for 10. Wonderful. With a 10, Betty. You open up this chest. You're able to, yeah, pop the, like, this fiend had done a number on this lock already. So you're able to actually open it up. And inside you see is a number of shadow puppets, puppets, and toys. Do I, I start to claw at the, um, to, to kind of tear away at the head parts of the puppets to see if one of them is like a secret tiny chaosium. I don't know. <laughs> you are just ripping these puppets apart and ripping these shadow puppets apart. And there are, n- there's nothing in there. Crap. And, and the, being is reacting to that, right? Seeing that the thing he's looking for is yeah. not there. Yeah, it it still is. Like now that it sees that it sees that the chest is open, and you see it wildly stri- trying to like you see it start to slide a little bit on this this post that is pinning it to the wall. It's not gonna go anywhere, but you can see that it desperately wanted to know what was in that chest. And as you rip through it, it gets frustrated and then starts to kind of swing at the back of Betty where Betty's sack is. I'm going to try to finish it off. You're going to finish it off? Yeah. Just like go for a 10 with my axe this time. So Roll me look- 2d6 plus guts. Braga. Braga. All right. So that is actually a 10. Natural 10. Wow. wow. So you just decapitate it? Yeah. Yep. Not, not, no, no, like, flare, no panache. I'm just, like, done with it. I'm just, like, and I, it, it literally looks like Braga's just done. I'm just, like, <laughs> done. Yeah. Right before you decapitate it, it turns to you all Mm-mm. and just stares. And almost in this very hushed, quick voice, unlike the voice you've heard coming out of this thing prior, this kind of was- this wispy, kind of crackly whisper of a voice. Suddenly, you all hear. He has the thing you're looking for. And with that, you sever the head. I... It's like, is it, does it do you think the other ones did where it turns into that like liquid and kind of seeps yeah, in the ground? Yeah, it's the liquid you start to... Yeah, as you decapitate it, its head rolls off and this <clears throat> inky black liquid starts to seep into the ground and it starts to turn into dust. I, as, as it's seeping, I take the empty potion bottle that I dumped on Violet's hand, I try to, like, pick some of it up into the bottle to stop her. It. I will say you do, because that's pretty creative. Yeah. I want to, I'm, like, bandaging my hand with this curtain while I'm talking. What, 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 what is on your hands? What is on your hands? I, I don't know. Is it still there? No, it, as soon as it died, this marks disappeared. It's not I'm, the first time I've seen mine. I just didn't know you guys had yours. It seems bad that we have it. I don't know what it is. Or You've seen it. yours? What is it? I don't know, but do I remember? Do I, was I told that it was the mark of Arius? I think somebody did. Didn't I, I think so. Krona did. Or someone, or the triad did. I'm... I'm or your father, yeah, yeah, your demon something, something. father. Someone, you know that it is the... Yeah, you're the only person that Krona. knows. I think it was Krona. Uh, well, now that you both have it, might as well tell you, we're marked by Arius, I guess. Ah. I mean, it makes sense. We both took a vacation in Arius' <sighs> land. Well, what is that thing looking for? It kept I don't saying, like this. It was saying something about the toy, too, now. And Did it, you hear what it seems, said? Which seems different. Was there a toy? Even in the new version that D heard, was there a toy? I don't remember, but I mean, and I, I want to reach my pack and take out that toy that I took from the house. Do I recognize anything different or weird about it? Or Roll me 2d6 plus canny. Okay. Getting situated with the doll. Six, seven, eight, nine. One more token. Ten. Wait, isn't your canny three? Yeah, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so you're I rolled seven. Six, seven, seven. Oh, wait, sorry, eight, nine, ten. You're right, right. Yeah, yeah that makes math. Math. <laughs> Betty, as you further inspect this toy, it's like a little carved elephant. You start to look at it. The, the craftsmanship on this toy is immaculate. It is gorgeous from the carving down to the detail. You even see that like its head can move and its trunk can move on these like tiny little joints. And as you look at the other side, you notice that painted over is a small carving. 
a mark, you would say, of the original creator. And there you just see a C. A calligraphy C on the bottom of this elephant. Hmm. I think that monster wanted this thing. Or maybe whoever made this thing? Or a little bit of both, maybe? So what did he say? What did he say? Well, right. He has the thing we're looking for. Did, did it say that, or did something else say it? Cause it, that, that it voice... said that. It said that, right? But I it... heard that voice, but was it saying it, or was it coming from somewhere else? Did do any of us, would, I, would any of us reckon, have recognized the voice? Or is that a voice you've never heard before? It was a voice you had never heard before. And it almost was, in this thing's last moment of life, something compelled it to say that. Interesting. Is I'd there like... any body left for us to search? Betty would know that there is a body within the house, but that is it. No, I meant of oh. the thing we just killed. You see that there is a pile of dust. You okay. can examine it if you want. Well, I'll let uh, Hannah do what she was going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. You're safe today because of the Rat Queens. No one needs the monarchs. You're welcome. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> because there's a stage and I used it. Okay. I just it was liked... actually like a very small like little puppet stage. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he climbed up on the puppet stage. I was, I, I was on it. And, uh, and I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> gather ye, gather ye. It is because of us, the queens of rat. I just want to start. Um, I want to be like, let's go. I'm going to sift through the dust walking. to see if I find anything in the dust. You were very loud. Okay, what do you want to do in the dust? <laughs> I'm just sifting through it. like but Not with my bare hands. I'm like taking my dagger and kind of poking through it to see if I feel anything physical in Roll there. Roll me 2d6 plus canny. <gasps> I gotta stop doing things that are that are clever because I don't have the taste <laughs> Well, who knows? Braga's now getting very close. Yeah, getting yeah. up here. Right Ooh, <laughs> well, that's a 10. That's 10. Wonderful. Braga, there's not much left here. But what you start to notice is... In the past, when you've encountered this, the, per, the previous time you encountered a fiend, mm-hmm. the body disappeared and you kind of left the scene rather quickly. However, upon further inspection, being around this body as it has slowly deteriorated, you notice that the remains that are there are of sawdust, of canvas, of stuffing. And this sludge that was once thick and acidic-like, you pull open the vial from your waist again, Mm -hmm. and inside is just regular ink. Mm. Okay. Hannah, because you announced it to the world, immediately coming down from the rooftops, you see five figures. A tiefling mage, a dwarven fighter, a human cleric, a smidgen road, and an orc bard. As the monarchs land. Interesting. What did you do? Your job. Danny steps forward. Interesting. I kind of knew you were there the whole time, but I didn't realize that you guys were controlling... I had an inkling. I had an inkling. I had a thought. I did. When we first met you, and when those things came out while we were talking, I assumed, ah, they make those things move. But boy, boy, your stories were pretty good. You know, you, for the first time, you see this flush in Danny's cheeks as her hair almost starts to, in a Ghibli-like fashion, start to move underneath her tiefling rage, as her eyes start to glow and she takes a step forward towards you. You think we did this? It's obvious. You want to save the day. And the reason you didn't come in now is because you knew it was going to try to kill us. But what you underestimated is that we're fucking great. As she lunges towards you, (laughs) she drops her staff, and you just see her hand extend as she tries to grab you by the throat. Hannah, you are watching as this hand comes towards you, but almost in an instant, Marigold 
and Midge are both holding Danny back. You see that Marigold is starting to lose her footing in the sidewalk as she's being pulled on the weight of Danny's arm as Midge just braces her and kind of keeps trying to pull her back as these tears start to stream down Danny's face. Her eyes go a tiefling yellow as she continues to claw at you. I want to run over in front of Hannah just like a like a peace peace sign. She wouldn't be this pissed if it wasn't fucking true, you bitch. I lose everyone and you blame this on me. Yeah. They spit her. <laughs> you spit on her and she just stops. And she just stands there. Marigold, Kira, Lola, and Midge. Just look at Danny and wait. She inhales. She exhales. She picks up her staff. No. Hannah. I know how to keep my temper. And I actually know how to handle a fucking situation. Come on, monarchs. We're going to the headquarters of the MAUR to talk to them. She just walks up the street. Marigold, Kira, Lola, and Midge just stand there staring at you. As one by one they turn and they leave. So who was that? Oh, those are the those are the weird the monarchs. Those people. are the monarchs. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like sleeping for all of that stuff, yeah. so I'm kind of like, real confused. Yeah, but, those, um, we, the people mm-hmm. I was like talking about this morning. That was the mm-hmm. bitch. Okay, great, Hannah. What? What? Within an instant, she flashes and she's immediately right in front of your face. I try to be a better person. I try not to play the bitch card. I try to protect people. I try to work together. I'm honest with my feelings. I care about my companions. Yet for some reason, the good in me and the perfection in me angers you so, doesn't it, Hannah? You haven't liked me from the day you looked at me, but don't worry, neither will Stridus. that makes that happen, will I? No. You do that everywhere you go. A path of destruction is left. Goodbye, Hannah. As she flashes out. Do we all hear it? Fr- that only Just Hannah? her. She flashes out and joins the rest of the monarchs as they walk down the street. Hannah, you know this is like an old god doing all this crap, not these random people who we met in this town. Thank right? you. Thank you, Betty. Talk I, some sense like into I her. literally was in a room with this god, and he told me, hey, are you going to get this one, this one, this one, this one? flip a fireball at the stage and take a walk. I'll say you do that. Okay. Did you notice that their their Violet and Braga had to hold their hand back? So it's like, even though like they're like, they're, it's weird how like they're exactly the same as us. Like There's something weird about that whole group, though. Oh, a lot. Yeah, a lot. That, like, they, I don't know that we should yell at them, but I also feel Why? like... Why? Why is it so weird to be great? No, no, I just... Cause they, Why? Uh, Why? Mm, something wrong about this. Yeah, I don't... I, it's not that it's not the greatness that's weird. It's like there's just some there's something about it that just feels off. Where why did why were they suddenly here? The, the chimes didn't go off, but they were right here when those things appeared. I mean, are right. really loud. She can yell at like she can like break glass with that voice of hers. And yeah, th- but she did. She had just yelled when they appeared. It wasn't like they were if they were across the city. It still takes time to walk it. Like yeah, that's yeah. a good point. And magic. I trust you both. If you have a weird instinct. But we have to be strategic. We can't do this. Yeah, we have a, like all this other stuff to deal with. So that thing, so again, that thing we just killed, talked in a weird voice, and apparently we're, three of us are marked that we know of. 
probably your next Violet, which is not great. We should ask Dee when we see her if a mark flashed up on her hands while that was happening. Mm-hmm. You're right. And the toy. And the story about the toy. There's something so significant. Can we see if we can find where the puppet person, puppeteer person went during the commotion? If I can track that person? I will say yes. After all this commotion has ended, the townsfolk of Stridus have started to come out of their homes and out of their stalls, kind of checking and making sure that there is no commotion left. You see that there's this this old, old elf woman who has this beautiful kind of like raven black cross braid with ribbons in it uh, and tiny little bifocals on the edge of her nose and a crooked back. She's like, Oh no, 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 oh no. She runs over to her stage that's now on fire because Hannah just mm-hmm. lit it on fire. Oh no, the bad people did that one. Yes. Yep. Oh, she tries to start. not wrong. And she goes, she, she's not only, she's quickly distracted by the fire to see that all of her puppets are now ruined and destroyed. Oh no, the bad people also did that thing too. Oh, I'm so sorry. No. She, ah, tragedy. She kind of slowly, she slowly has to like brace herself on the edge of her stage so she can get down on her knees oh, and starts to try to pick up. She gently holds each of the puppets in her hand and she's almost as whispering to them as she's putting them back into the chest. I am so sorry that this happened by def- the hand of a bad person. I will give you some money to help. I feel so bad that this is so great. You're doing such a great job. Just, you, oh, I feel so bad. So, we so do bad. feel bad, but it's, do, you, do you know why those things were looking for your chest specifically? They came right to it, like a yeah. torpedo. Only 2d6 plus heart. I probably wouldn't say torpedo, because it's probably not a thing that exists. Tonight. <laughs> like a magic, magic missile. Yeah, like a magic ah. missile. Came straight for it, like a magic fireball. Yikes. That's a six. We have a reroll, do we? We do. I'll, I'll take... Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Let me see. Oh, I have a token, so I'll make it a seven. Yes, Braga, you have one more token. There are no more second chances. Yeah, okay. so I'll make it a seven with my token. Wonderful. With a seven. So that's like one question, right? Before I get personal? Mm-hmm. Okay. What was your question again? I say, like, do you know why they came right... Why would they... Do you know why they would come right for your toy chest? They came right out like a magic missile. As her <laughs> eyes well with tears... She's just kind of like, you just hear her mumbling to herself and just distraught by not only her her puppet theater being destroyed, but also her shadow puppets and her puppets. And you just, she kind of looks up with you with tears streaming down her face. It's the children. It's the children. It's always, uh, it's always near the children, the homes with children, the children and their things. The toys, the, the things, they they go after them. I don't know why. Oh, I never thought that they would destroy everything I owned. <laughs> everything my sweet, sweet Carth- yes. Carther hey. left for me. Car- 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 Who's Carther, Car- my, my long-deceased husband. Okay. Was he oh. the toy maker you were talking about in your story earlier? Oh, no, that is, oh, that's somebody else. Do you reckon the, the legend of a man who lives in this town? Oh, do, do you recognize this? Wait, currently lives, lives in. The, sorry. Do you recognize this one too? It's, I hold the elephant. Oh, yes. These these toys are all over the place. Well, there's a toy maker in town, but the legend of this toy maker, well, it's a. I didn't get to finish it, did I? Uh, perhaps that's a tale for another day. <laughs> the, the conclusion, it's, uh, it's one that I heard. I tell stories to the children, stories of, of heartbreak and loss and the dangers of what will happen if, if one allows loss and heartbreak to consume their soul, consume the heart. The heart should be filled with joy. If a heart is filled with too much sadness, too much loss, then the heart is driven to do unthinkable things. The ending of this story is tragic, yet it is told as a warning to others. Cool. But yes, there is a toy maker in this town, and this is one of his toys. What's his name? His name? 
Let me think for a second. Ah, yes, it's coming back to me now. <laughs> oh. Coppelius. Mr. Coppelius. See the C, that is his, his marking. Marking of his work. I think Perhaps. these. Hmm? I feel like after what you said and what we saw today, I think that these things are after a certain kind of toy that the children have. I don't know why, but maybe that's. <clears throat> or the thing the thing we're looking for is, is with the, a toy also. It looks like a toy, maybe. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is. Thank you, and we're sorry for your. Um... Yeah, here have some gold on us. Oh, thank just maybe you. help rebuild. Thank you. I just gave her like twenty gold. <laughs> just you know, I f- we feel so bad that this bad thing happened to you through no fault yes. of our own. You should least... tell the M A U R what happened too, and they'll they'll compensate you as well. I will. Thank you. I'm just thankful that no one was. It seemed that nobody was harmed in this attack. That's right. Yeah. Just just your hands. Why the horns didn't blow. I do not know. As the tears well up in her eyes again as she starts to continuously pick up the remainder of the broken toys and put them in the chest. I don't I think mean, I've ever felt this guilty in my whole life. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Did this uh, Coppelius make your puppets or did is it just did you make them yourself? <gasps> my dear sweet Carthur made them. Carth. But how funny. You should bring up this the toys, anything that seems to be a toy seems to be a target now, doesn't it? Are they after the children? Or something else? Goodbye. Goodbye. Yep. She slowly puts her things away into her trunk. She stands up. Perhaps come find me? Or perhaps I'll find you. And I can finish the tale. Another day. What was your name? My name. Just call me the storyteller. Oh, all right. We should probably head back to the magical army. Yeah. I think some stuff's gonna happen down there. If, yeah. we don't. Yeah. if you um, if you two will head down there, I just want to try to meet up with Hannah, and I'll meet you there. That's fair, and. See if you can take care of your hand, because uh, you don't want to walk around that big of a wound for that long. Thank you. We cut to Hannah. Thank you for the chaos. I did roll a one. <laughs> Hannah, what are you doing right now? Ah, uh, Jesus. I'm walking um, towards the homestead of the monarchs. I'm going to scope it out somewhere. As you're walking... To the homestead of the monarchs. You find yourself seemingly tripping on nothing. And as you fall down, your wand, you land on it, and it is snapped in half. (sighs) Nice little lesson. (laughs) Belford Boggin! I smoke some more wizard weed. As you just lay there? Yeah. (laughs) I'll say Violet. Yeah, you kind of see Hannah laying in the street. (laughs) Hannah? Just going to lay in the middle of the street, smoking a bong? Look, might as well use it for firewood now. Actually. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Let's just try to, we'll bring it to D. At least try to bring it to D. Listen, uh, when a magical wand, especially from the past, is broken, it can't be fixed again. Well, I guess you'd know better than me. No. Yep. You know everything. No. Don't. 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 You know what? And then I just take her wrong and I just start smoking it. (sighs) Have you ever smoked wizard weed? It doesn't really affect me because I'm so strong, but... (laughs) (laughs) So there's uh, just a gesture. Try to let it. Try to let. See, so get some tingles. See, if, see if I can tingle it up. Might start in your J. One can only hope. I'm gonna 
ask Braga tonight to be leader. What? But I'm done. I honestly am done. She's perfect. She's perfect. She's thinking about everyone else all the time. That's all she does. You're going to be a leader. We have to trade out. This, it's, we have to trade out. Why? Because we, we're a group that's equal, and it's gone on too long. That's not how it works. That's how it works. It's my last thing I'm going to have say on. We all should have say. And I'm going to just decree it. Because if we're not in this together, and I'm not focused... I'm worried about you all the time. Me? Yes. I'm worried that you're going to say something insane to people and make us vulnerable. I've done nothing but help. That's the thing I don't. That's the thing. That, that's why I've, I've done nothing but help. Uh, I'm not saying you haven't been helpful. I'm saying I'm distracted and that's not good. What are you going to step in front of me every time there's a fucking battle? I want to. Yeah. That's bad. I'm a capable person. You are I'm, so capable. Yeah. I've lived this life this long. I don't need anybody looking out for my back. Well, I can't say the same. I hope you're looking out for my back. Well, maybe Braga should. I'm just saying that I do, I do feel it. I do feel it in my vagina. <laughs> That it, it's so, so surprising that you predicted that. And also, this is going to be better because I think we'll be better friends. <laughs> and Braga's perfect. You should have said I don't disagree with you. You're a terrible leader. Thank you. Fine. But you're also a terrible friend. Okay. Well, great. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. We used to be best friends. I thought we were. I really thought we were. So I'm sorry that you think I'm so terrible. And I'm sorry that I'm not, don't live up to your expectations. Just hang out with Danny. She fucking went, you, you want to just hang out with Danny, that's fine. I haven't even talked to her. I don't, I don't know a her. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. There's something wrong there. I, I don't, I, I'm right. And no one got my back back there. No one had my back. Her entire team. Her entire team was ready to go I to was a battle. Literally for standing her in front of you, I don't to know what you me, want. To stop me, not to help me. I was right, and no one helped me. We have to sober up because we need to help our friends, Betty and Braga. I got Dave. something to do, and I like push myself off the ground. <laughs> and I just walk the opposite direction of, of her. Yeah. As the two of you walk your separate ways. In the middle of this, staring out a window, was a young girl watching as we see a hand is put on her shoulder. There, there, Bella. No need to worry. I will always keep you safe here. You have my word. Let the squabbles of people of Stridus be their own. We are safe, my daughter in our own castle as he blows out the candle in the window and that is where we will end tonight's episode Ooh! thank you all yes. so so much i do see that there was an npc tipped oh. thank you so much i will incorporate them at the beginning of the next week's episode it was just hard i could not find a place to fit them in but all of the craziness that was awesome i just want to get yeah. these two that was such a fun scene to like just sit back and let you guys do i love oh it was so great i feel so bad for them Thank you. I no, it's so. the juicy, juicy no, goodness. I juicy. I know. No, I just feel bad for them. It's like sex. It's no, big. no, you know what I mean? Will the rat queens make up? Where is Hannah going? Will Violet really relinquish leadership to Braga? And how will Braga handle nope. being named as leader? And nope. what do Betty and Dee think about having Braga as a leader? Oh. Braga, Braga's not going to take leadership. We're going to have to find out next week on the Rat <laughs> Queens RPG right here on Hyper RPG. So Thank you all so, so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for voting in the polls. Very fun things picked in the polls. And also to everyone who tipped, I'm going to go down this list and yeah. let's thank everybody. What? Arsenal Roy 2K. 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 Arsen
PR Fan 2002. PR, PR Fan 2002. Peak One. Peak One. one. Dambowski 11. Dambowski 11. Zauron. Zauron. Benostein. Benostein. Zauron. Zauron. Metsu's Phantom. Metsu's Phantom. Dashing CN. Dashing CN. J Pistol. J Pistol. Erinsink. Erinsk. Erinsk. I did it. Uh, Drek Fledge. Giant Replacement Rat Baby. Giant Replacement Rat Baby. Barking Garo. Barking Garo. Doomsday Danny. Doomsday Danny. Numpty 524. Numpty 524. J Pistol and J Pistol. J Pistol and J Pistol. Thank you for that. Attorneys at Law. NPC J Pistol. They will be incorporated. I will not tell our queens who there was right now, but they will be incorporated at the beginning of next week's episode in a very fun way. Thank you all so, so much for joining us. This is the Rat Queens RPG right here on Hyper RPG. Real quick around the table, where can people find y'all? Jessica Lynn Verdi on Instagram and Jessica Verdi on Twitter. Great. You can find me everywhere on the internet at I am Tree Bunny. That's Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, all that good stuff. Riley J. Silverman on Twitter and Riley Silverman on Instagram. And real quick, my Doctor Who actual play role-playing podcast is doing our first live show this Friday night in Los Angeles and Burbank. Oh, so check it out at Kiki Tees. Thank you. You can find me at Laurie Michelle J on Twitter and Laurie Michelle Jones on Instagram. Wonderful. And I'm your GM Lee at frankly underscore Emily on Twitter with an extra underscore on Instagram. Man, oh man, this week at Hyper RPG, it's getting crazy. Not this week, but next week. Because uh, this week we've got the final, I think, final kill team for Warhammer tomorrow night. We've got Troll Hunters on Friday. And then next week is a big week, y'all. Not only is it season two premiere of Colock 1991, it's also the season two premiere of Warhammer. So get Whoa. excited. <laughs> it's going to be a jam packed week next week. We Cannot wait to have you all back here, not only for those shows, but also for the Rat Queens RPG next Wednesday. And, of course, Blood Curdling Tales on Tuesday, right in between all of those wonderful shows as well. So thank you all again so much for joining us. And until next Wednesday, keep adventuring, my queens.